missionary trip to Mexico, and she wants to tell you all about it. Amen. Give God praise for that. Amen. Um, so recently, I went on a mission trip to Mexico with my youth group, and um, before my mom's dropping me off at the where we're about to leave to go to California first before Mexico, um, she grabbed my hand and she said, Mia, God told me to fast and pray to that my um, gift of ministry would be put on to you. So I, I was like, okay. So we prayed and all the way to the bus, and then I left. And by the second day of my trip, um, we did a thing called a treasure hunt, where basically you ask God to give you clues about what to look for while you go out into the community of Tijuana, Mexico, and what to find and what to pray for. So I'm in my group, and I, and I see in my mind a dress with red flowers on it. And another kid in my youth group saw a blue shirt, and another kid saw turquoise shoes. So we're out, and we're picking up trash in, around Tijuana, and um, we find on a clothes hanger a dress with red flowers on it. So we're like, okay, this is definitely the house. So we walk up to it, and we ask this lady if there's anything we could pray for her for. And she's like, oh, no. And we're like, um, is there any type of illness? And she goes, yeah, we'll actually have a brain tumor. And so we're like, okay. So they call me over to come pray for her. And then another kid that saw the blue shirt came up behind me, and we all started praying for her. And, um, and as, soon as, she, as soon as we stopped praying for her, she said that all the pain from her brain tumor that she had before was gone. And she had also spoke about how um, she had depression. And somebody else in our group had actually gotten the word depression in their mind in, during the treasure hunt. So we start praying over the house for depression. And then all of a sudden, we notice that the kids that are playing in our front yard, one of them's wearing a blue shirt, and one of them has turquoise shoes on. And she said that immediately after we stopped praying that she immediately felt peace and happiness through her. And that her house was just flowing with happiness. Fourth of July. <laughs> it's on? Yep. All right. My girl, my girl Tracy's watching at home. Hi, sweetheart. These people here and a bunch of other people on YouTube and Facebook were praying for you. God healed you. Love you, sweetie. Also tonight, my uh, granddaughter is uh, visiting. She's watching on YouTube tonight. Her name is Sophia. Sophia in Greek means wisdom. wisdom. wisdom correct. That's right. She's very smart. I don't get into a lot of discussions with her because I don't want to get embarrassed. <laughs> I just talk about basic stuff like food and clothes. But... <clears throat> Sophia has occasional migraine headaches and We've had several people come here with migraine headaches. And I cannot remember over the years one case that wasn't healed Not one case it's caused by fear spirits and it's triggered by stress and We're gonna It's gonna ask you if you would pray for my granddaughter tonight Sophia. She's listening right now and uh, Karina was I was going to ask you to pray for her, lead us in prayer for her headaches right now. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Grab Sophie's hand and hold it right now. Thank Amen. you. All right. Thank you, Father. We bless you right now, Lord. We give you praise in advance for, for, for her healing right now. Sophia is healing right now, Father. We just stretch our hands out. Out to the YouTube land, Lord God, we thank you, Father, for the healing power of your spirit right now, touching her head, touching her mind. Lord, we bind up and rebuke the spirit of fear and stress, and we break its power off of her mind through the blood of Jesus Christ, and we command that thing to leave her mind. In the mighty name of Jesus, we command that spirit to loose her mind right now. You are bound, and we cast you out of that mind right now, out of Sophia's mind. We thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus Christ that covers and destroys any power off of her mind through the power and the authority of the blood of Jesus. Glory to thank God. you, Lord. We praise you, God. We give you glory in Jesus' mighty name. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank Amen. You, Amen. Thank that you. Peace. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Happy Fourth of July. Yeah. It's a holiday, so everybody's out of town. 
and uh, always on the holidays the mics jack up That's not a special annoying that's a holiday buzz it happens every I don't know why All right, there's that's Mexico there uh, <laughs> All right, so uh, I changed my radio ministry here it is let me get through these announcements quickly tonight I got a Wonderful Bible study tonight. Lots of fun tonight. We're going to have a good time with this Bible study. I promise you. There's our new schedule on the, on the radio programs. We're on uh, every morning at 7.30 and then three other times during the week there. You can catch all the radio programs on Omni FM off the website. My Dark Sky uh, radio uh, listeners dropped when I was uh, off. Uh, being with my daughter Tracy while she was in the hospital, uh, went down from 84,000 to 53,000. So I got to rebuild that back up. When I first started, it was 14,000. All right. All right. Uh, so 53,000. I'm not complaining about anything. Hey, would you like to help the ministry? You can help us if you buy stuff on Amazon. Go to smileamazon.com and put in our name, and they will pay us when you. Buy stuff. There's our YouTube channels. We added a new one, number four, the radio teaching channel. Send me an email and I'll send you a self deliverance list that you can use at home or on a loved one. Send it to you immediately. You can donate to our ministry on the website. Those are the three books that uh, was mentioned earlier in the announcements. They're in the bookstore. I don't know if anybody's running the bookstore tonight. If there's nobody in there, just go ahead and buy it and put the money somewhere and then go home. We have a healing room on Thursday nights, and it was another barn burner last night was what I was told. Rick and Rick's tearing that thing up Thursday night. And it's just, uh, I think it's going to take off huge. I really do. I think we're eventually we're going to move him in here, and then this will all fill out, and then it'll go on out in the street. It's really amazing. The mental illness healing class is also Thursday nights. We rotate teachers now. Uh, Brother Ron moved on. He's went on to another ministry. We're in the process of hiring another a manager for the healing house. So temporarily, we are not having any guests in the healing house until we get the new manager on board and up to snuff. And uh, things will really get going around here when I finally get up to snuff. I'll be on Talk America Radio on July 25th. That'll be a, that's a nationwide radio program. And uh, Arnie rigged up uh, some tasers in the donation boxes. They're on the doors there. So if you don't donate any money when you leave, <laughs> you'll hear a <laughs> noise, <laughs> and then you'll jump. Don't worry about that. That's, that's the judgment of God. <laughs> yeah, I got that out of my Kenneth Copeland tithing book. <laughs> Can somebody uh, close these doors here while I'm chit chatting with the people, if you don't mind? All right. All right, tonight's Bible study is based on the King James Bible, and we sell the KJ3 Bible in the bookstore. That's the best translation of the New Testament I've ever seen. What they did was they took the text, translated it just like they saw it, and then they left it for you to figure out. And that's the way I think it should be. These are my recommended Bibles to study out of. They're all based on the received text. They do not have a bunch of verses taken out of them or chapters gone, do things like that. Hey, it's celebration time. It's the 4th of July. We have a lot to celebrate here in America. This country is off the hook. Fantastic. And you got any proof of that? I do. Look at all these freedoms no one has in the Middle East. Nobody has uh, in Asia. Nobody has. Look at this. Unbelievable. If you're accused of a crime, you get a speedy trial. Can you believe it? You're presumed innocent until proven guilty. That's crazy. You're free to worship amen. here. You know that? Oh, amen. The Jehovah Witnesses are free to come to your door and knock on that thing. And trying to get you to join a cult. And I am grateful for their right to do that. I'm on the Jehovah Witnesses' side. Yes, sir. 
If I try to restrict somebody, somebody will come along and try to restrict me. Eh? We have freedoms here nobody can believe. The government is supposed to work for you in this country. You don't work for the government. That's not true in Russia. It's not true in China. We have freedoms here that are ridiculous. You have the freedom to assemble. You're seeing that right now. It's a miracle. See these breathing humans? We're assembling here. Yeah. You are not allowed to do that in China. The church is underground in China. They are not allowed to come sit here and listen to me talk. Yeah. I'd be arrested within minutes over there. You're allowed freedom of what? Speech. You're allowed to say whatever you want to say out loud or to yourself. If you say it to yourself too much, getting into an, another subject, we'll go in that later. You have freedom of religion here. If you want to open up a religion, worshiping goats, you are free to do that in America. Isn't that great? I would, I'm 100% in agreement with your right to worship goats. Do I recommend that? I do not. Stop doing that. But you have the right in America. You're free here. This is America. The land of the free and the home of the brave. I know that because everybody wants to come here. If America stunk, people would be leaving here. They wouldn't be coming here. We got people trying to get in here from every corner of the planet Earth. Why? God bless America. <clears throat> God gave this country more than he gave any other country. He offered it to Israel first. The Jews said no. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> what were you thinking? Well, there's nothing worse than stubborn, stiff-necked Jews. That is bad. There's nothing worse than stubborn, stiff-necked Christians. Bad. Very bad. Hey, God said, hey, if the Jews don't want a land flowing with milk and honey, I got to give it to somebody. He gave it to us. It's a miracle. We live in America. Because we live here, we take it for granted. Just repent of it. Lord Jesus, please forgive me for taking America for granted. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. If any of us lived two days in China, two days in North Korea, one day in Saudi Arabia, we would run back here so fast, you wouldn't even believe it. We'd fly back here and humans aren't able to fly. Israel was partying a couple of years ago, weren't they? What, what, what happened then? <clears throat> Remember? Yeah, their 50th anniversary. Isn't that something? The whole Bible revolves around this section of land right there. The future also revolves around that section of land right there. You and I are going to be living there someday. In Jerusalem? No, that's a ratty city full of demons. We live in the new Jerusalem. Everybody who's born again gets a condo in the new Jerusalem. Can you imagine it? Jesus said, hey, I'm going. I'm preparing a mansion for you. Wow. That Greek word means a dwelling place that's suited just for you. That means that he's picked one out for you that's different than hers. Because you like things in a home that she doesn't and vice versa. It's a Holy Ghost tailor-made house just for you. Amen. If that doesn't encourage you not to backslide and blow this thing, very little will. Because you're going to be dead soon, no offense. I've looked at a few of you, and some of you may not make it through the night, but <laughs> you're going to be dead soon, and there's nothing worth losing your home in the New Jerusalem for eternity. Nothing's worth that. Nothing in this life is worth losing that. This little section of land. We're all going to live over there someday. It's going to be completely renovated, but that's the area where we live. The Bible says that. Guess who else is a celebration this time of year and every day of the year? You. Oh, y'all. Oh. 
brother Mike you don't know me well I know a lot of you and yeah there's not a crowd hanging around you but I'm gonna tell you tonight what God thinks about you not what your relatives and friends and neighbors think not not too many of them like you you are a celebration to God and he doesn't care what your neighbors families and friends think of you. he doesn't care he only cares what he thinks of you here's what he thinks of you he rejoices over you do you know why do you know why he does everybody including God likes his favorite stuff human beings love their favorite stuff everybody's got favorite stuff food what's your favorite food Italian food I see a divorce here <laughs> Mexican right everybody's got favorite food my wife she's not here she likes chocolate that's her favorite almost anything with chocolate I don't have a sweet tooth myself but she does and if it's chocolate we can't let it get near her. <laughs> have you ever heard of that everybody's got favorite stuff yes. period favorite cars favorite clothes it doesn't matter the human beings are built on favorite things everybody's got something that's their favorite thing God who owns the universe has a favorite thing <laughs> He's got angels coming out of his ears. He don't need any more angels. He's got vast assets. He don't need any, need any more universes. Yeah, you know, that doesn't get him going. That's not what he's interested. That doesn't get that doesn't get his juices flowing. That doesn't get him fired up. A universe. I got five million of those. What's another universe? What's the big deal? Yeah, he likes all that stuff and he created it and he finds that attractive. Good for him. I'm 100% I'm on his side. But that's not his favorite thing. Guess what is? Italian women. <laughs> Mexican males. You are his favorite thing in the universe. Humans are his favorite thing. Big. He used to come every day into the Garden of Eden looking for Adam. And they would sit and talk. He would come looking for Adam. He would hunt him down in the Garden of Eden. He used to bring him animals and sit there and look at him, name him, and enjoy it. Huh? Yeah, it's more than you know teaching pet tricks. See, everybody has a pet, and when they do something funny, ha ha ha! I like that. That's my pet. That's not Adam and God. They had a relationship. Adam wasn't a pet because God gave him something unique. He didn't give the animals total free will. He gave him total free will and told him, "Listen, you can stay with me or leave me. It's up to you." Why? God wanted somebody to love him of their own free will. Hey? Yeah. Nobody wants a cyborg. Nobody wants a robot to say, I love you. You are beautiful. Who cares? It's a machine. It's not coming from the heart. Nobody wants that crap. Father didn't want it either. He could have made a bunch of robots to say, You are glorious. Hallelujah. He doesn't want that. He wants somebody who has a free will who wants to do that of their own free will. He made Adam with a free will. Humans were his favorite thing. When it happened before that, millions or trillions of years ago, whatever it was, I don't know, he made all these angels and made Satan, who was Lucifer at the time, the greatest of all the angels. Satan Lucifer had everything He had everything Adam had plus everything else Adam ever dreamed of Lucifer had everything 
he also had free will angels were created with angelic free will they could come or they could go they could leave they could stay it was up to them Lucifer chose of his own free will to leave other angels how many I have no idea Agreed with him and they left When they left God said goodbye to them and Provided no plan of redemption to get the angels back none They were gone They were damned to an eternity in hell and they were not given a second chance They will all burn in hell according to the Bible Jehovah never went back to get them They had free will but oh oh Adam oh Yes, Adam was a totally different story The moment Adam took that apple from his wife Okay he should have slapped it out of her hand. He should have picked up that serpent, whatever it was, by the throat and drug him out to the edge of the garden, Eden, wherever that was, and heaved him into another galaxy or something. Whatever should have happened. That's what he should have done. No, no, not Adam. No, he was the, the king of the goofs. This moron takes the apple, knows. We isn't supposed to be eating it. Knew he was doing wrong. The wife didn't. She was deceived. The wife was so gone, it was like she had been talking to a Nigerian telemarketer. She had been sucked into a vat of total deception. Out to total lunch. Adam was not out to lunch, knew what he was doing, and took it anyway. I'd like to get my hands on him. The second he did it Jehovah Already had a backup plan To do what get the angels back never in a million years to get us back He could not he couldn't do it. He couldn't stand it. He couldn't take it It was too much for him. He couldn't lose humans Why because humans are his favorite thing Amen. I am God's favorite thing. Uh oh, brother Mike's starting to call. No, you're the same as me. Humans are his favorite thing. Humans were the one thing, the one thing he can't stand to be without. When a uh, insect dies. When a fish dies, when a goat dies, when an animal dies, when a snake dies, name it, mosquito, they're gone forever. He doesn't keep them. They're gone. They have no eternal spirits. They're just dead. They go back to the dirt and they're gone. He doesn't want to keep the animals. Why? Animals are not his favorite thing. You are. You are his favorite thing. He wants you more than angels. He wants you more than galaxies. That's right. There's galaxies out there that God doesn't even, couldn't care less if he loses them. How do you know that? He created something called a black hole. What's a black hole? I don't know, but it's like this giant vacuum cleaner. And it sucks up stuff and nobody knows knows where it goes it's gone how does that work it's God cleaning the crap out of his universe he set up a system that needed a automatic cleansing system I saw and I saw something like that on TV the other day this sweeper you charged it up you put it down and it roams around your house by itself 
it, banging their moves, bang move, and it's cleaning your floors, and you don't have to do nothing. When it's through done, you pop it open, take out the thing, empty it. It's like a rolling black hole in your kitchen. You are more important to God than a universe that gets sucked up in a black hole. He doesn't care about that stuff. He's got plenty of it. You're it. You're his favorite thing. <laughs> Can you believe that? Have you looked at people? Now they're jacked up. <laughs> Can you believe it? Have you even looked at how they look? I mean, I look fantastic. Look at the regular people. <laughs> they're nuts. It doesn't matter to God. He doesn't care what somebody looks like. It, it doesn't phase him at all. He can't care less. What sex are you? What race? All the things that humans are important and concerned about. He, he has no concern whatsoever. Couldn't care less. You drop dead ugly? You ball, well, come on in, he says. Are you gorgeous? Come on in. I went in. God's going to rejoice over you. Why? Because you're his favorite thing. Can you prove all this? I certainly can. Check this out. If any man be in Christ, he is a new kainos, fresh creature. Katesis is a Greek word. It means creation. You are a fresh creation when you come to Christ. You are a new person in the eyes of God. Not your relatives. Yeah, they, they think you're nuts. I'm talking about how God sees you. This isn't how other people see you. It's how God sees you. That's what I'm teaching on tonight. That's the only thing that matters is how God sees you. It doesn't matter what your cousin said, your neighbor, your co-worker. What God thinks of you is the only thing that matters. You are a fresh creation. All things are passed away. Parukamai means not to disappear, but to pass you by. Okay? What's that mean? It's like you're standing at a bus stop. I told you the story. I went back to Kansas to see my dad. He was dying of cancer. I'm doing a Bible study on in terminal form. And I'm so engrossed in this thing, they're speaking on the speaker, hey, flight such and such going. And I didn't hear it. Yeah, didn't hear it. Thank God I'm people who are not intelligent are God's favorite thing too. I, I got in. I missed my flight. Missed the flight. Didn't get out for six or seven hours later. Next flight to Wichita. What did it do? It my it the flight passed me. I missed it. Old things, you missed it. It's passed you by. It's gone. Your old stinking life is gone. Who you used to be as a person is gone. Your failures, your sins, your, your stupidity, your ignorance, your asininity, use your own dis dis adjectives. It's gone. It passed you by. Psst. It's over, Jack. Behold, all things become same Greek word. Kainos, what? Fresh. What does that mean? It means this. When you were living in sin, you looked like that rotten apple. Now that you are born again, you are fresh creation. You are now the apple on the right. The apple of his eye. When you were living in sin, you were a rotten tomato. That's what you are. Rocky Balboa was called that. You're a tomato. That's what he was. A rotten tomato. See, he never got saved. You, after you got saved, you became a new creation. You are a new tomato. <laughs> if you backslide and turn your back on God, what does it mean? You go back. The Bible says you go back to your... There you are. You're, you went from a fresh... New apple, a fresh new tomato. You are now puke. 
Do you want to be puke? Who likes puke? Nobody likes puke. <laughs> Trust me on that. I got a divine revelation. <laughs> Listen, First Peter chapter two. So Second Peter says that somebody who leaves God and goes back into their sin is like a pig that goes back to wallowing in the mud. Right. Okay. Hello, you are not doing that tonight. You are not backsliding tonight. If you have backslidden, it's so easy to come home. You know why? Backsliders are God's favorite things. You know why? They're humans. If somebody's died, there's no point in going an inch further there when they're dead and gone. That's the end of it. Don't bother to pray for them. Don't try to communicate with them. Boom. It's over. Okay? You're not dead. You're sitting here listening to me. And most of you are. Listen. You have been divinely reconciled to God from what Adam taking that apple from that crazy woman <laughs> I've had a few crazy women in my life before uh -huh. yeah those are not good stories but those passed me by I repented of that I was forgiven for that all them crazy women that I had in my life man they were barnyard nuts <laughs> they passed me by. I was forgiven and they're gone. I was forgiven and they're gone. He took a bite of that apple and sealed our dooms. Temporarily. Uh, he didn't get us. No, he didn't. Uh -uh. No, he did not get us. Why? Because God had a supernatural plan to reconcile humans back to himself. The job appeared to be impossible. Why? Adam was born or created sinless. God can't hang around one sin. Well, that's a big problem because I not only was born in sin, I am I was a rabid sinner. I was sinning like a machine. I was trying to perfect sinning. That's how bad I was. So the relationship is hopeless. Ah, not yet. All things are of God. Second Corinthians five. Who has reconciled? Catalasso means to ex make an exchange. Okay? you're a rotten tomato. You're a new one. You're mentally ill. You're sane. You're physically ill. You're healed. Ignorant. You're ignorant. You're knowledgeable. <laughs> you're a sinner. You're a saint. <laughs> Catalasso. God reconciled us to him. How did he do that? Wow. It says, Dia, through Jesus Christ, and he gave us the ministry of reconciliation, which is what I'm doing right now. I am doing my very best. To get any person to listen to me to understand you can come right back to God right now and you are being offered total reconciliation Amen. backsliding restoration Amen. demons deliverance Amen. God provided total reconciliation that Adam stole from us to it, God was in Christ reconciling the what? Cosmos, humanity, the human world, to Himself. You're separated from God in a hopeless position. Now you're in the New Jerusalem. Yes. Not imputing their trespasses to them, and He has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Every born again Christian. No matter who they are has this ministry Every single one can take advantage of this ministry By simply witnessing to someone and explaining to them. Hey, you are out of fellowship with God right now, but guess what? You can be reconciled to God Every single Christian has that capacity to witness to others and bring them into the reconciliation of the kingdom of God every one of them and in fact, every Christian has been given that ministry 
at a minimum Amen. Says it right there God did not impute our Sins to us What is the imputation? Logizomai There it is when you reach The point in your life where your conscience matures You are in deep trouble It would be better for you to have been aborted than to have lived your life and died at a hundred and to go to hell You'd have been praying and begging somebody to abort you mm. Why because as soon as your conscience matures or as preachers say you reach the age of accountability That's what they say God starts to Impute your sin to you. It's an inventory So if your conscience matures at age nine and this one matures at age 12 and that one matures at age 11 or this one has a, a Disability, let's say down syndrome and they never mature this Down syndrome patient never has sin imputed to them Because their conscience doesn't know the moral difference between right and wrong Everybody's conscience matures at a different rate In our society today because of technology people are maturing at faster rates than they've ever matured before now we have Now we have kids in junior high or grade school dying and going to hell Because they're more mature and their consciences have matured and they know the moral difference between right and wrong sooner than they did back in the 40s and 20s and so on As soon as your conscience matures and you know the moral difference between right and wrong guess what happens God Starts to impute or create an inventory of every sin you commit every sin of omission is included on that list You know you're supposed to do something and you don't do it bang. It's imputed to you You knew you shouldn't have said that and you said it bang. It's imputed to you. It goes right on your record Supernaturally every human being is monitored by the Holy Ghost and their sin is imputed to them Why is that? Because God is just Not like our court system where you pay somebody or you lie here and there God doesn't do it like that his his court system is totally different He has the actual facts That you did and he shows them to you Revelation 20 on judgment day and every sin you ever committed is reviewed so that the record is clear and the Bible says then God is just mm -hmm. How does he get that information the Holy Ghost imputes it to you From the moment your conscience matures. so if your conscience matures at age 11 from that moment on the clocks now ticking and you are headed for the lake that burns with fire and brimstone and judgment Jesus said if you do not believe that I am you will die in your sins He told the Jews if you die in your sins you carry this list of Items in this inventory with you into eternity You carry it with you into eternity and then you have to give an account of it on the day of judgment Every person Except <laughs> yes. Oh boy. Oh yeah. Adam got stuck with that imputation thing. Not us. No, no, no. Oh no. Not imputing their trespasses to them. Your list is empty, sir. There's nothing on your list. Your list's empty, isn't it? It was a long list, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was a long list. I tell by looking there. Your list is empty. You understand that? There's nothing on the inventory, dude. Your inventory's clean. Yeah, and yours was like miles long. This guy here, 
This guy here made sinners scared. Listen, in your inventory is empty, honey. There's nothing on there. Who had the longest inventory? Adam. Every human being that ever died got put on his list. He murdered the whole human race. Why? He's listening to his wife. <laughs> Listen to me now. Oh, I just heard a hey. Now that went on the inventory of somebody. Listen up now. For here it is, Second Corinthians five. Why? How's it, how could this possibly happen? How is how is his inventory empty? God made Christ sin for you. Unbelievable. God took everybody's list, all of them, and dumped them on the Lord Jesus, the Son of God. And he became a pedophile. He became an adulterer. He became a homosexual. He became a murderer. He became a mass murderer. Everybody's inventory. Listen to this. Including Hitler's. That was a long list. You kill 10 million people, man, you got a list that won't quit. No. Had he repented in that bunker yeah. instead of taking that thing? Yeah. He could have been yeah. preaching during his trial. Yeah. He could have been preaching while they were hanging him. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's how powerful the blood is. Yeah. That's how powerful it is. Look! God made Jesus Christ the Son of God who knew no sin to take my inventory, all of it, that hideous list that list is so embarrassing if that list were up here I'd be so humiliated tonight I would crawl out of here oh my god I did what you said what oh god how would you like all your sins popped out in public that's exactly what happens on judgment day to sinners if you don't have the blood of Christ you stand before God you have to stand there because God is a just God and if you didn't stand there he would be unjust and he would be a sinner because he's not fair God is fair just so if you don't want Christ that's up to your free will you tell Jesus to go screw himself that's on you that stays on your inventory and at the end you have to give an account of your inventory oh not everybody has an inventory anymore we are now the righteousness of God how the ministry of reconciliation God took your hideous sins and gave you his righteousness what Jesus had no inventory he took yours and gave you the empty one Amen. Why he had the ministry of reconciliation Thank you, you got to have an empty inventory to make it to heaven Amen. Amen. Come on, sir. Oh man, <laughs> this is not getting through <laughs> There's a lot of heathen here tonight. I like heathen. There is nothing wrong with you in the eyes of God. You don't have an inventory list. Your sin has not been imputed to you. There's nothing wrong with you. I cut the crap, brother. My, my mother said this. My wife said that. My this. No, I'm not talking about people. They find stuff wrong with you all the time. That's got nothing to do with nothing. God looks at your inventory list, sir, and there's nothing on there. Your list is empty. Thank you. Praise 
this is more important than the fourth of july love the fourth of july love america oh thank you jesus this blows it away Ephesians 1, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. In where? Carnal place. No. What are you, nuts? This verse is routinely misinterpreted. Let me help. The Greek word for heavenly there is not oranos, which means the heaven of heavens, where the throne room is. That's not the word. It's aparanias. It's the... It's the heavenly atmosphere around the planet where all spirit beings move through. It's from the ozone down, so to speak. That verse is telling you that when you have your inventory sheet emptied and you have been reconciled with the righteousness of God, your sin removed. You're above your old life Amen. You're not down here in the carnal world anymore Standing here looking around like a lost soul at a bus stop uh, I'm an idiot. Can somebody help me? Uh, no, you are above the fray in heavenly places in Christ where where angels move through the atmosphere Is this making sense? How did you get there? Well, you got there through the ministry of reconciliation. God took your iniquity and swapped it for his perfection. When he looks at you, your sheet is empty. He sees perfection. Well, wait a minute, that can't be. I'm ugly, I'm fat, and I'm stupid. No, that's what people see you as. I'm talking about, I, I am representing God tonight. My job is to tell you what father thinks of you not what your friends think of you Amen. People always find something wrong with you. That's part of people It's called people God has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world Eklego means God specifically selected you. He took you. He, I want that one. I want her. That guy. I want that guy and I want that red hair with him. Come on in. That's right. Now, society's going to look at him and go, are you kidding me? We don't want a guy with red hair around here. Father goes, I can't wait to get a guy with red hair. Come here. Am I helping anybody tonight? Yes. Yes. Am I helping you son? You have been accepted and chosen by God. He specifically yes. went around and picked you out. Amen. Specifically picked you out. Hallelujah. In order for him to know that, he has to know who the heck you are. Hallelujah. Other people know who you are and oh boy, they turn up their nose. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God, here she comes. There he is. Ooh, jeez. Father runs over to get you. <laughs> it says it right there. Eklego means to select something, specifically pick it up, okay? I'm going to do that right now. Here's my pointer for the thing, and here's my pointer for to switch that. I'm going to choose this one. I'm thinking about it right now. Which one of these do I need? This one. I need this one. I, of my own free will, chose that one. Ekleko. God said, yeah, there's my girl. Mm -hmm. That's my guy right there. Hallelujah. He picked you out, dude. Thank you. It wasn't a random thing. Oh, let's scoop a bunch of stuff. Oh, come on, let's peanuts. Let's just pour the no. He picked you out, Ekleko. He looked at you and said, "You, I want you." Period. Yo, honey, I want you. Yeah, you. When did you do that? Before humanity was even conceived. The Holy Ghost had a backup plan. Let's say we're going to create Adam here, and uh, 
we're going to give him all kinds of stuff okay now we did that with Lucifer and it backfired on us but let's take another shot at it let's create a human we'll give him a lot less than we gave Lucifer but we're still going to give him a lot why because God can't help it he's a giving person he he can't stop himself he doesn't know how to stop it he that's what he is he it's in his guts he can't stop giving see that's how we got America the Jews said oh we don't want it the greatest country in the world you know I got to give it to somebody so they came across on the Mayflower I guess and somebody God specifically chose you before you were born Amen. what's that called omniscience I don't have omniscience no I don't have omniscience I in fact, I don't have a lot going on in here, but Before you were born God knew who you were How's that possible? I don't know. I don't know how that's possible But he knows everything. I mean, that's just what it is. You got to take it by faith. It doesn't make any sense to me, but You were already picked out honey before you fell out of your mother's womb before you dropped Father looked at you. It says it in Jeremiah chapter 1 for God's sakes. He said I knew you when you're in your mother's womb It's what Jehovah said to Jeremiah He's saying it right here. He knew who you were He chose you then He chose you to be what? Hagio sanctified Set apart to God Sanctification means to be set apart for God through the ministry of reconciliation. I take your evil iniquity I impute the righteousness of God into you 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 inventory nothing on there empty Amen. you've been called by God before you were born you are now Hagios sanctified set apart to God I don't feel set apart. Well, that's not God's fault. I'm telling you what Father thinks, not how you feel. So you're going to repent of that tonight and get healed. Amen. God chose you before you were born. Amen. God is not imputing your sins to you. Your sheet's empty. You've been called and chosen before you were born. You were chosen before you went into sin and Amen. act a fool. Amen. Thank you, God. <laughs> yeah. I can look around here and I see all kinds of people that used to act a fool. <laughs> That's right. I've been a counselor for 37 years. I can read people like a book. I can just point them right now. Fool, 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 fool. <laughs> Guess what? You were chosen before you went into sin. Before you started in porn. Before you started stealing. Before you started burglarizing apartments. Before you started to whore yourself around. God chose you before. You lived in sin. You were chosen by God. Chose to be what? Set apart for Him. Set apart for Him. I want that one. I want that one. I want that one. I want that one. Well, wait a minute. She's going to go into whoredom. He's going to go into murder. He's a rapist. I want him anyway. What kind of person wants rapists and killers and murderers? Someone who has divine love. That's Amen. the kind of person that wants them. Amen. And guess what? You are to be without animals. What is that? Spotless. You're spotless to God. You're not a fault anymore. What do you say? You're not at fault anymore. Your fault, your failures. It's called trespasses. Paraptima is the Greek word for trespasses. It means failures, screw ups, slips and falls. You're innocent. Right? The ministry of reconciliation made you innocent. He took your failures and handed you his successes. It swapped out. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> this, this can't be real well yeah 
It's real because I'm reading it out of God's word. It's divinely inspired. This is what father thinks what he wrote in here period We don't believe the Bible. Well, you got serious problems and that's one of the things on your inventory you in some bad trouble This is God's holy word God chose you before you were born to be set apart for him and to be blameless in his eyes And if your inventory is clear, there's nothing to blame Amen. Brother Mike, I thought I've been married six times. I failed as a husband six times. Not anymore. No. Your husband failure? Reconciliation swaps it out. You're a perfect husband. Well, I never heard of a perfect husband. I haven't either, but God is able to swap it out anyway. I'll tell you, this is good preaching. John 15 if you were of cosmos the human world the cosmos the human world would phileo like you But you are not of this world Now we're getting down to the crux of why your life sucks You don't know who you are You don't get it You are not Part of humanity anymore. You are not part of your family anymore. You got a different family. Well, my dad uh, beat me and ran off with another one. My mama, she's a drug and she's a this and that. It doesn't matter anymore. You're not in that family anymore. Well, I'm a Smith, I'm a Jones, I'm a Gutierrez, I'm a Rodriguez. No, you're not. <laughs> That was your old life. Yeah. Old things were passed away because all things become new. Yeah. You transferred out of your dysfunctional family into the family of Father. That's your family. Not those kooks at home. They're relatives. That's it. Well, my dad did this and that. You don't have a dad anymore. You have a heavenly father. Amen. Your life sucks because you're living down here. You're not living in heavenly places in Christ. You think you're still a Smith and a Jones. Oh, friends. I feel so sorry for you. You have missed your destiny. This is not your world anymore. Amen. You don't belong here anymore. You're not going to live here much longer. You are not of cosmos, the human world. If you were, the human world would like you. That's why nobody likes you. Because the devil sees you went through the ministry of reconciliation. Hey, this guy here, he, 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 he's a saint. He, he's sanctified. He's been set apart to God. This guy don't fit in around here. You don't fit in around here anymore And because your life's ruined. It's because you've been trying to fit in someplace. You don't belong What happened to brother Mike he's losing it You don't belong here anymore Ecleco same Greek word. I chose you out of the world. I chose you It happens in every area of life. If you leave this employer and you go to that employer, you don't. You're not an employee over there anymore. Amen. Right. If you, if you look at the NBA, they this guy gets traded over here. That guy gets traded over there. You're not on that team anymore. You're on this team. Yeah. Yeah. Your Christian life's a failure because you don't get it. You're not on that team anymore. You're not on the human team anymore. You are transferred into the kingdom of God. Yeah. You don't belong here. I'm gone. If the world likes you, the Bible says there's something wrong with you. If all men speak well of you all the time, oh, that ain't good. I chose you out of the world. You are not supposed to be in this world. 
Well, everybody else does it. That's the worldly way to live. That's not you. You're not supposed to be living like that. You don't live in that neighborhood anymore. You were traded up. That's why the world and sale despises you because you don't belong to it anymore. Look at that. According, God did it all according to what? Check it out. Ephesians 1. God has predestined you to be what? Wow. Adopted. That's right. Okay. In the United States, uh, this child here uh, has no dad and the mother's a crackhead. The CPS takes the child, puts it in a foster home, then they go to another home, then they shovel them around, and eventually, hopefully, they're adopted into a new home. Right? And the parents' names was Smith. The adoptive parents are Jones. The child takes on the name of the adopted parents. The kid becomes a Jones. Correct? Yes. Adopted. Your Christian life sucks because you don't understand. You were adopted out of humanity into the heavenly places in the kingdom of God. And there's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. Amen. Uh, you don't know any of those tunes yet. Let's sing it again. There's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine. Oh yes, it's mine. And the okay, I just ran off the YouTubers. But listen, <laughs> when you get adopted out, you don't belong to that old family anymore. Amen. Why does your Christian life suck? You're acting like you're back with your old family. You're acting like your mom's still a crackhead and your dad's uh, drunk and gone. No, 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 no. You were translated in from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. You were adopted into the family of God. So you don't understand who you are. You're not getting it. You're a very, very important person to God. You've been adopted out into God's family. Why? Because God wanted to do it. According to what? Somebody twisting his arm, somebody begging him, somebody threatening him. No, he did it because he wanted you. He chose you before you were born. He chose you to be sanctified and part of his Adopted family. He chose you the ministry of reconciliation your long list of sins Handed to Christ. He gave you his list of sins zero If I could get two people to catch this Bible study tonight Phoenix would be in trouble just a couple people is all we need to catch this to realize that you're not a you're not in that family anymore you don't you have a dad now your real person is your heavenly father not your dad You transferred out of your earthly family into your heavenly one. You've been adopted in the kingdom of God Amen. Why because God what you to him he wanted to do it see everybody's got preferences correct He's got a preference of hair color She's got a preference for that shirt. Did you pick that today? <laughs> you picked it? Okay. I didn't pick it. Please. You didn't pick it? Okay, well, she picked it. See? God did it. He picked her. She picked that shirt, and God picked her. Amen. Before she was born. Before they'd ever made that shirt. Amen. <laughs> I can backdate stuff. <laughs> Listen carefully. Father wants who? Everyone. He is not satisfied. He is not satisfied. Oops, I missed a point here, didn't I? Yes, I did. There it is. Predestined us. Listen, if you find a trash can somewhere, collect all those teachings of Calvinism for me 
and go over to your trash can and put them in there. Okay. Then take them over to the paper shredder. <laughs> then take them out to the garbage. Come on, sir. Throw them in the crapper. Yeah. Crapper. Hmm. This guy's not a preacher. <laughs> no, I'm not a preacher, but predestined doesn't mean that God predestines you to go to hell and you to go to heaven. That's a false doctrine. That's a lie from the pits of hell. Praorizo means to pre-appoint. Now listen to me carefully. <clears throat> hey, check this out. There's, there's two trains passing through humanity. Hey, this one here is going right straight to hell. There's a much smaller train going through humanity. This one goes to glory. Okay? Every person that's ever born has a seat on these trains. When you're born, you're on this train. When your conscience matures and you sin, you are now going to this train. You're going to hell. You've been pre-appointed by God to be on this train. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Hello, Calvinism, crapper. You choose which train you get on. God doesn't say, "Well, you know what? Ah. Nah. You know what? These people, you're going to hell, and these people over here, you're going to heaven." Total insanity. Amen. Right? It's nearly the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Yes, right, huh? What train you pass into eternity is the train you chose. That's right. There is a seat for every human being on this planet. There are 7 billion people living on this planet. There's 40 or 50 billion people supposedly died bef after Adam. There was a seat on the glory train for every single one of them. Did they get on the train? No, most of them didn't. Do most people get on this train? No, Jesus said. The narrow gate. Uh, most people go on this train. Few people go on that one. Okay, But it's all based on your choice. You chose to come here tonight, so therefore you are going on this train. Amen. Thank you. You've been adopted into the family of God. How do you know Calvinism is garbage? Oh, it's not garbage, it's crap. First Timothy chapter 2 says, Who will? Who does? God. He wants all men to be saved. What? Sozo, delivered. And to come to the knowledge of the epignosis means the full knowledge of God, not just knowledge. I should have been translated full knowledge. He will have all men to be saved. That's the Greek word thalo. He wants. Oh. You were chosen before you were born. Why? God wanted to choose you. He wants you. It isn't a situation where he was forced to take you. You know. Somebody happens to stagger by your front door and preach the gospel to you. Oh, don't preach too much of that guy. Don't do it, the Lord. Oh, God. Oh, oh, he got saved. Oh, gee. All right, well, let him in. No, you idiot. He chose you. Yes. You're not here by accident. You're, you're here by his choice. Yes. And if you go on the big train to, through the gates of hell, that's your choice. But Father chose you yes. to go on this train. Amen. But he doesn't force you to go on it. Like Calvinism teaches God forces you to go to hell you get to go to heaven. That's all garbage Why because the Word of God says it and there it is Braduno means Procrastination God doesn't procrastinate the Holy Ghost jumps on people at this altar so fast You wouldn't believe as soon as they open their heart bang he hits them 
He's not a procrastinator. He's right on top of you. Why? He knew you before you were born. He chose you before you were born. You were to be sanctified and set apart to God. You have been chosen to be in his family. You've been adopted out of your earthly family. You are now in your heavenly family. Amen. Why? According to the good pleasure of his will. He wanted to do it. He wants to help you. But he is what? Macro through nail. He's patiently enduring your life. Oh boy. I didn't turn my life over to God till I was in my 40s. I was living like the devil or trying to. I wasted most of my life. I'm up here trying to make up for some lost time, I guess. Older person now. I already wasted a bunch of stuff. Sometimes older people who come to God are better than young people. You know, because you, when you're older, you know, hey, time is a factor here. And I got a better perspective one time than I had when I was 20. <laughs> Have you ever talked to a 20 year old? They're darn near retarded. <laughs> but they think they're Albert Einstein. They think they know everything. I did. At 21, I had the entire planet organized. <laughs> I mean, that stuff's scary looking back on it. Oh. You got to be kidding. God oh, was patient with me. Oh, gosh. Brother Mike's committing adultery tonight. He's drunk tonight. He's a, the Holy Ghost says, let's give him some more time. Let's be more patient with him. I got more patience than I, way more than I ever deserved. Oh, I should have been wrung out to dry <laughs> long ago. No, why? God. Deals with you patiently, hoping and waiting for you to use your free will to make that decision to leave your earthly family and enter your heavenly one. You've been adopted into the family of God. You're not a Jones or Smith anymore. You're not a Mukmag or a Bar anymore. You're not Gomez anymore. You belong in God's family. And the Bible says you get a new name written down in glory. I'm not going to be a Smith and Heaven, I get a new name. I get a stone with a yes. new name written on it. Yes. Is this sinking in? Is it, am I helping anybody? Yes. You are not who you think you are. Yes. You have been living down here in this stinking world. Listen, you are up here now. You've been adopted out of your family. You are not a regular person anymore. Amen. You're not a regular person. Hallelujah. God is what? Not willing. Bulamite. What does that mean? That means to make a decision over something. You sit down and you think about it. Okay. Shall we buy this? Sell that? Move this? Give that away? Shall we do? Okay, yeah, let's do that. Okay, well, let's buy it. Yeah, go ahead. That's what God did with you. He sat down and he goes, you're my guy. You are my guy. He thought about it. Yes. You don't get it, dear. You? you were chosen yes. because he thought about you. Hallelujah. He was thinking about you. It wasn't a random choice. Yeah. Let's just throw a bunch of miracles out there and see if they land. No. Every one of you are certified miracle from God. You don't belong in the Smith family anymore. You don't belong there. That's not you. You've gone up here. You are sitting in heavenly places, the atmospheric places, above it all now in Christ. You've been sanctified. Your inventory list is now empty. You've been given the ministry of reconciliation. You suck is gone. <laughs> this is deep. <laughs> Not willing that any should perish, but all. Amen. Stalin, Hitler, Charles Manson, John Wayne Gacy, all. Yes. What they? What happened to them? How come they chose this train? They chose it. They're damned. 
You chose this train. Yes. 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 I'm more excited for them than they are, Lord. <laughs> Wanting everyone to come to repentance. Amen. Everyone, all. Don't you get it? All means all. Somebody help me. Amen. Ephesians 1, the praise. For what? You have been chosen for God's praise. Based on what? The glory of His grace. Oh my goodness. Amen. You were chosen by grace. You didn't earn anything. It was given to you. Amen. All you had to do was accept Amen. it. You can sit around and accept the fact that you belong in the Williamson family and this is where you were born in India. They have it's even it's ten It's a million times worse there than it is here If you're born in this in this a caste system if you're born out of this group, you can never go to those groups There isn't any rocky thing going on in India Rocky Balboa all right. No, that ain't gonna happen In the kingdom of God. Hey, you are already up here. Yeah why isn't it working? Because you are not listening. You don't understand who you are. You don't get it. You're a big deal. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> Lord, I'm not getting through to him. Send me a lightning bolt. I need a lightning bolt. <laughs> On second lot, no, don't don't do that. Listen, this is all by grace, friends. You didn't earn any of this. Amen. What did he do? He made you what? Karatao. You are highly favored in the eyes of God. <laughs> what does that mean? Oh, yeah. Of course you know what it means. Is anybody here a father or a mother? Other than her? <laughs> That's it? Well, I'm a father. My daughter was dead at the hospital with pneumonia. I was over there every single day. Her mother was over there every single day. Why? I'm her dad and I love her. I was over there, period, hanging on. Her mother was over there, period, hanging on. We're, we're there. Why? Father's there for you 24 7. Why? You're his child. She's my girl. Of course, that's why I was there. Yes. yes. She's my girl. She had the money she died and I would walk off and leave my girl with you nuts father is hanging on to you like a dog on table scraps, sir. He's all over you. Why you're his son Amen. You are adopted into the kingdom of God He's not gonna leave you because he loves you too much Oh, I actually I did this and that that's got nothing to do with father. He's still here still standing there still waiting for you still loving you God, this is nuts. No, it isn't. When you're when you're adopted into this family, you take on that family's name. Amen. Yes. Amen. That's how it is in the carnal world. Yes. That's how it is in the heavenly realms. Amen. When you're you're adopted in the family of God, you get a new name Amen. written down in glory. Amen. Amen. I got to be helping somebody. You. you are highly favored yeah. by God. Don't you see that? You're accepted, not rejected. Amen. All the rejection you live with is the rejection demon from childhood. You picked it up from your parents. He's the one that tells you all the time you're rejected. He tells you you're not good enough. He tells you your list is still loaded with sins. He's doing that. Father's not doing it. Amen. Thank you, God. Praise the Lord. Father's telling you what I'm telling you tonight. I'm getting it right out of God's word. I'm not making this stuff up. Amen. When I make stuff up, I tell you. Yes. <laughs> you are highly favored in the eyes of God. My daughter was highly favored in my eyes. I'm her dad. Amen. This has got to make sense to somebody. Yes. You are what? Agapao. Oh my gosh. You are dearly beloved to God. That Greek word was used to describe who? That's right. A voice came from the heavenly glory and said, and I quote, it's mistranslated in the King James. It actually says, this is my son, the beloved. 
hear him. Guess what? Guess what? God uses the same thing he called Jesus about you. You are his beloved. I don't feel that. I don't think that. That's because you're putting demonic thoughts and satanic feelings above God's word. That's why your Christian life stinks. You don't know who you are. You're not getting it. Well, how can I do all these horrible things and be and and be all these good things apply to me because We have the ministry of reconciliation God swaps out your ugliness and gives you his beauty That's how it works Jesus did all that for you Because you sit around listening to demons all day you go into depression and sorrow and misery. That's them talking to you father's Talking to you tonight, Hallelujah. not demons. You are to him beloved. This is my son, the beloved. What's your name? Adrian. Adrian. What's your name? Lydia. What? Lydia. Lydia. This is my daughter, Lydia. She's my beloved. If she only knew that, she would have never lived the life she lived. What am I doing tonight? I'm trying to get you to see who you are in Christ so you will stop living the life yes, you're currently living. Yes, yes, yes. Your life needs to end today. Because this is not your life. It's all a fraud. It's fake. It's not real. The devil gave you this life. How'd you get in this condition? What well, says it right here? Ephesians 1. You were a palutrosis ransomed. Your imputation list is now empty. Why? Because God bought you. He chose you and bought you. I want you, he said. Yeah. When I was young, the government had this poster of this guy. Uncle Sam was on there. Guy, he scared me. I never hated. I never wanted to get involved with the government because I saw that poster and he was pointing at me. This, did you see that poster when I was a kid back in the 50s or 60s? Remember that? I think it said, I want you. I don't exactly. What did it say? I want you. I want you. That's what it said. It had a guy, this hideous looking psycho, pointing at me. Pointing, I want you. God, the first soon I saw that, I, oh my God. I got to get out of here. I don't want nothing to do with the government ever since I saw that poster as a kid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when I got out of high school in the early 70s, the guys were coming back from there. They were Vietnam was kind of winding down. You can't remember that it wasn't accelerating dramatically, but Now you had to Register for the draft Remember that anybody anybody do that you got a draft card Anybody ever get one of those nobody well this old I'm an older person so I got me a draft card but they would call your number. The draft card had a number on it. See? And if, if that guy in the poster wanted you, <laughs> they'd call your number. But uh, your number got dropped lower if you were a full time college student. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. Oh, they were dealing with a genius here. <laughs> I got out of high school. <laughs> Right over 12 credits. 12 credits. A homie don't play Vietnam. No homie don't want you. No, we don't we don't play that. I play this though. God pointed at you before you were born. I want you. I want you. I want you. 
He called you by name. Not the name your mom and dad gave you. Your heavenly name you don't have yet. That's how he talks to you. And Jesus saw you and said, Hey, I'm going to buy you. Okay, this is the 4th of July, but America's got some ugly things in its past. Okay? And this slavery thing in America let battalions of demons into this country. And we're being overrun by them now. These are the same demons that came in during slavery. The demons are still here. All them people are dead. The demons are still here. This was wickedness. They would auction people off. Guess what? You, 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 every one of you were on the sin auction block. And the devil owned you. And you were going to get on that train. And you were going to go to hell. And somebody stepped up and said, I'll buy that one. Well, what's the bid on that? I'm going to bid you for that one and that one. And it will be the highest bid, the precious blood of Christ. Jesus got every person he bid on. But you had to accept it. They had to accept it. Hey, I'll buy her uh, 40 bucks. Well, they didn't have to go. They could have been killed or committed suicide or what have you. You don't have to come. You're not forced to go. You're not forced to change how you see yourself. Huh. That's your choice. That's your option. Am I right? And when you were purchased off that auction block, you were ransomed by God. You were forgiven. Of all your sins where, where were they they were on your imputation sheet Ephesus paraptum it means what he released you from all of your failures you are no longer a failure in the eyes of God well you don't understand I've been married ten times I've lost my job 50 times no you don't understand father doesn't see all them bad marriages and all those failures he he sees you before you were born. He chose you before you were born. You've been sanctified and set apart in the family of God. You have a new name written down in glory. You are not uh, in the Herrera family anymore. You're not in the Jones family anymore. The devil wants you to think you belong there. He wants you to live carnally. Oh God, I got this stinking world. I got to fix everything myself. No, you don't. You don't live there anymore. That's not Amen. you. That's not your identity. Amen. That's not who you are. Amen. You've been bought with a price. Amen. Precious blood of Christ. Wow. You are not a failure. According to what? The grace of God. I failed so many times in my life. It's unbelievable. I can't even count how many times I failed. I can't. I counted the end result of it. Zero. I can count to zero. I counted to zero. My imputation sheet is now empty. All these things came off of there with bright red blood. My blood? Oh, no, hardly. My blood's only good to keep me pumping pump here. The precious blood of Christ wiped it off for eternity. What did he do? He made known to us the secrets, Mysterion, his secrets of what? His will. What will? I saw you before you were born, I called you. Before you were conceived, I know who you are. I specifically chose you. I specifically chose you. Well, if God chose me, then why didn't he do something about my miserable life? No, you have free will. Your parents have free will. Humanity has free will. Adam had free will. Everybody has free will. Okay. Right? Everybody gets mad at God. How come you don't save all those starving kids in Sudan? Listen, everybody has free will. Yeah. But if Sudan came to Jehovah in the name of Jesus and said, help us feed these kids, the kids would get feed. Yeah. They'd be. 
Will they be eating Chinese food at a buffet? I don't know, but Father would pr provide yes. for them. Yes, That's right. But they don't ask him. They got free will. They want Allah to fix it. Allah is not going to fix it. Not going to fix. Free will. God's free will was I chose you. Because that was my choice, he said. I chose you before you were born. I chose you before you were a sinner. I chose you before you hoard yourself around. I chose you before you were a burglar and a thief and a liar and a cheater and a murderer. I chose you before you started that. And Paul says, how much more then are you not eligible for the benefits of God? Knowing that while you were yet sinners, Christ died for you. Yeah. I can't tell you how many counseling sessions I've had with people who are down in the dumps over their lives. And they feel so much guilt and shame. And in God's eyes, they don't have any. I got to, from the ground floor, work with them and bring them back here. Did you ever read any Wigglesworth books? Yeah. Wigglesworth caught what I'm teaching tonight. He got it. And in his mind, every need was just automatically met. Every, every gift the Holy Ghost had was his. All the resources of God belonged to him. He just naturally accepted it. Why? Because he read that and believed it. Would you be willing to do that? Would you be willing to read that and actually believe that? Hey, I was I was bought off the block of slavery. Satan had me in bondage to sin. He had me on this train. I took the train to the lake of fire. And I was bought off that train. God bought it. Why? Because he wanted to. He likes you. So that what for? In the dispensation of the fullness of times, God might gather together in one. All the things in heaven. That's the heaven word. Who are in us. That's a heaven heaven. You are on the train bound for heaven. Amen. You don't live here anymore. Don't you get it? You own your house? No, you don't. That's just some place you're temporarily staying. Yes. Yes. That's not your house. Dude, your house is in New Jerusalem. Thank you. Jesus. Yeah. What needs to be done tonight? Well, I wish I had. You ever watch the Three Stooges? Yes. <laughs> the, three, the Three Stooges. I don't know what was wrong with those guys, but. <laughs> I used to watch the Three Stooges when I was a kid, and then I got tired of them. They weren't funny anymore. And then when I started drinking, and then I watched the Three Stooges, it was hilarious. <laughs> the Three Stooges are hilarious if you're drunk. <laughs> you can't stop laughing. But sometimes Mo would get mad at Curly, and he'd put his head in this vice. You ever seen that episode? And he'd put and and. He'd go woo 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 woo, and his head caught in the mic. He kept turning it down, and you could hear it crack. And like, That's what I need to know. I need some Holy Ghost vices here to go around to each person and just put it on your head. And I'll start turning that. Do you believe the Word of God? Say it. Do you say cr crack? Oh, she didn't make it. Then go over to this one. God's trying to get this through into your spirit, man, that you are a Hallelujah. new creation in Christ. You are not the person you think you are. Amen. And if I had the gift, the anointing of the three stooges, and it, and it worked, I would go around and see that hand there? Bonk. To every person if I thought it would help them, but it won't help them. This is a free will choice on your part You are free will deciding what family you live in you you're gonna free will decide 
where you should be and who you are. This is your choice tonight. Wigglesworth grasped it and took it. Ephesians chapter 1, in whom we have obtained what? An inheritance being pre-appointed according to his purpose. God chose you before you were born to be on the train to glory. Thank you were chosen and he willfully chose you. He thought about you and then picked you out. Yeah, we did it all the time in high school in gym class you know we went through football season basketball season whatever you know and the better players were the captain you know and when I was in high school I was a good athlete so I was a captain another guy a captain and then we decide who choose first for the basketball team right right nobody else did this well anyway you everybody's standing there in the gym class and then he chooses the that I choose and you always choose the best athletes because you want to win you don't choose the goofs <laughs> you, you choose the people that can play so he chose then I chose the second best player that I thought then he chose the third best one and I chose the fourth right you and I was thinking about who I was choosing mm -hmm. I thought about it right. and the last one you, you know, whoever got stuck with the last guy there and I'll take Harry. <laughs> and you try and keep from vomiting because you know he's going to lose the game for you. But you see, God chose Harry first. Yes. First Corinthians chapter one. God chose the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. We would choose the best athletes for we were do we were antichrist. We were doing the opposite. Jesus would do it. Jesus would have gone to Harry, the stumbling bumpkin, first. <laughs> and chose him why because he would have appreciated the benefits of God more than the talented athlete who thought he was doing everything yeah. on his own yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's right. yeah. oh, this is this is a good teaching yeah. what were you a good person and got all this oh you weren't even born yet and you got it all you weren't even born yet and you were chosen it's all done by grace don't you understand it you can't Destroy the grace of God. <clears throat> well, wait a minute, Mike. Oh, that's her that's heresy. We can't just go out there and sin. No, you can't go out there and sin because if you do, you're gonna reap what you sow, and the demons are gonna kick your face in. Mm -hmm. And God's gonna let it happen because that's the law of sowing and reaping. I'm not talking about that right now. I'm not talking about that. You cannot confound God's grace, it's right there for you. Now, if you told, tell the Lord to go suck on a bunch of eggs, yeah, you can get back on this train. It's hard, but it is possible. But none of you are going to do it, so why bring it up? You are saved yeah. through grace and by faith. Yeah. Amen. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Yeah. Hebrews 1. Come on. It's the gift of God. Yeah. Don't you see it? That train to glory. That seat on there has got your name on it. Now check this out. When this train goes into glory, if you're not on that train, your seat is empty. You're on that seat. There's two seats. There's two seats. There's this train going down. There's one going up. You ever taken a train? Yeah. Have you ever been in the food car? Yeah. And then another train coming the other way yes. with the windows. Yes. That's awesome, isn't it? That, that's a little scary in a way. Well, they're going fast. Well, that's what heavenly trains are like. They're going fast. And there's a seat for you on the train to hell. And that seat is empty. There's a train for you here. When that train pulls in to the lake of fire, your seat will be there, but you will not be in it. Amen. Yeah. God gave you the ministry of reconciliation. He took your seat out and gave you that one. It's the gift of God, 
not something we earned. Oh, this is really good. For we are his what? Poema. Product. Oh, man. It's a gigantic heavenly factory of God producing saints who go out victorious, crushing Satan. You are his product. Amen. Made by the Holy Ghost. Amen. You were born again. You transferred into the kingdom of God. You are not in your earthly family anymore. You are now in your heavenly position above it all. Here. You are sanctified and set apart to God. You were chosen personally before you were born. God knew all about you and He took you anyway. Yeah. A lot of you people would have been like Harry. Last one chosen on the gym team. Yeah, don't raise your hands. Yeah, I know. I know where you belong. Yeah. No, this isn't like that. You were chosen first to be on Father's team. Amen. But you're living like you're down here somewhere. Carnal. You're living carnally. Worrying about things. Fearful of things. Living in Lack, living in, in embarrassment, living in guilt, living in shame. When in fact, none of that is seen by Father. You are blameless in the eyes of God. He took your trespasses, your failures, and swapped them out for his successes. <laughs> That's okay. I'll, I'll just enjoy my own Bible study. I don't need you guys. Listen, you have a new parent and a new family. Did you know that? Yeah. You have not received the spirit of bondage to, again to fear. You received the spirit of adoption. Dude, you're not in that family anymore. See, you were born in this family. You're in your heavenly family now, son. Somebody listen to me. Well, the Jews hit this one really hard because that's that's who he was talking to the Jews read this and go wow I can't believe you said it. We read it and go hmm didn't register, but you know that Jews Abba Worked like that right if you were Jewish not American But if you were Jewish the dad in the family was the head of the household at the top of the pyramid. The firstborn was next in line. See? Correct? Yeah. And then the other daughter, son, daughter, daughter, whatever it was, was under that. So that when the dad died, the inheritance was split down through the family, but the firstborn got the bigger chunk. And then the rest of them had to split that up, whoever was alive. Correct? And the firstborn sat next to dad at dinner in the home and the firstborn heard the intimate conversations of the dad with everybody else the firstborn was included in everything else the firstborn knew about the secrets of the family the firstborn got the inside scoop the firstborn was a favored child uh, and the firstborn and only the firstborn could use Abba That meant intimate father Intimate closeness The other ones would not allowed to use that term Is this helping anybody these this one did not use Abba That son here daughter son. They didn't use that is, am I, is this clear? What's what's God saying? You are now the firstborn. <laughs> this is unbelievable. You went from being born in sin to the firstborn in God's family. You are the beloved of God. This is my daughter, the beloved. Look at her, beautiful. Look at her. There's my daughter, the beloved. It's a sign from God. I'm telling you right now. This is, you don't get this kind of stuff at Hillsong. No, 
Romans 8, the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, mistranslated there in the Greek word atos, himself. The Holy Ghost a person, not an it, like the Amen. Job witnesses say. It's just an it, it's a force. No, he's a person, and boy, has he got a lot of force. Amen. You'll be seeing him down here tonight moving among the people. Praise his holy name. <clears throat> the Holy Ghost bears witness with your spirit that you are in fact adopted out of that family and you are now in the family of God. Okay, now let's get real for a second. I don't, I'm not sensing the spirit telling me that. Okay, there are things in your life, clutter in your life that needs to be removed. Okay? Your conduit of your spirit man to the Holy Ghost may have a couple of blocks in it. There's a couple of stones in there. There's a couple of clogs. See? Uh, have you ever tried to look down the drain of a shower in an apartment where a female was living? <laughs> <That's not right. sighs> Whoa, there's some hair down there. <laughs> Ladies shower. They have longer hair than guys. Not obviously not all the time. <laughs> they will clog up a drain huge okay now the water's not going out there it's pooling at the bottom of the shower now now the water is dirty okay. and there you are you are the shower and you've got stuff in your life that you know doesn't belong in your life you you're doing stuff reading stuff seeing stuff saying stuff that needs to end why we got to get this drain unplugged so the water flows smoothly. The water is a frequent symbol of the Spirit of the Lord in the Bible. By the washing and regenerating and renewing of the Holy Ghost whom God has shed abroad in our hearts. When are you going to do that? Tonight's the best night to do it. You need to get rid of your clock. Huh? You got a clock. You ever had a clog before? Oh, yeah. oh boy, I tell you what, you get clogged up, <laughs> and I'll tell you, you're, you're at Walgreens. Because that ain't fun. That ain't, you ain't playing around either. When you go into Walgreens, you're, you're two days, three days, a week or so, oh, you're, you're in a bad mood. And you're walking up to the clerk, and it's not a hi, how are you? You're, where's the, on, <laughs> where, take me there now. Okay. You're out in the you're out in the parking lot, dropping, pushing. I mean, you're desperate. Okay, tonight, if you will get that desperate to get rid of these spiritual clogs in your life that you do to get rid of the constipation that you have occasionally, huh? Huh? Hello? Yeah. You ever you ever eat a lot of meat and stuff on the holidays, like Thanksgiving or something? And boy, this stuff that's like a clunk down in there. Yeah, people can watch stuff, hear stuff, say stuff, hang around people who put bad, evil, wicked, sinful stuff into your system, and it clogs up your ability to recognize yeah. Yeah. the anointing in the Holy Ghost. You need to get that clog out of there fast. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. What's the best night to do that? Tonight. You are the what? You are a child of God. You are not a child of that birth family anymore. You don't belong to them. Does that mean we should hate our relatives and get rid of them and shoot them? Well, of course not. We're to love everybody. I'm trying to get you to see what your identity is. Your identity is not your family. It's your heavenly family. Amen. That's your real identity. God. That's really who you are. So in the fullness of time, God came... He sent his son and made of a woman under the law to redeem them. Redeem. You were purchased by the blood of Christ so that you might be adopted into the family of God. You are a child of God tonight, not a child of your parents. Your earthly parents are temporal. They will die. You will die. All this stuff's going to die. Your sonship and your daughtership is eternal here, and it will never die. You will never die. This house you're living in here is temporary. Your real house is the new Jerusalem in heaven. 
It's in heaven right now. It will be on the earth someday. Yes. That's what the Bible said. And you call out to your father, what? Hey, dad, hey, father. No. You're like the firstborn. Uh -uh. What does that mean? You and the good Lord are tight. Amen. Well, God hasn't been moving in my life. I don't feel it. Well, that's the clock. Okay. Let's remove the clog and reach for the anointing. Huh? Yes, sir. After that trip to Walgreens, six, eight hours later, you're a new person. You're a new person. You get filled with the Holy Ghost. Man, you're a new person. You you repent of your sin and get that crap out of your life. You're a new you feel like a new person. That's how it works. Just unclog that thing. Ephesians 1, if having predestined us, you've been pre-appointed pre pre to be on that train. There's a chair on that train as an adopted son and daughter of God. Why? Because God wanted to do it. So what's the net result of this? You have boldness and access to God. And with confidence by the faith of him what's that mean hey listen God wanted you so bad he saw you before you were born then he saw you born here carnally and then somebody shared the gospel with you and then God in grace and mercy hey, Gave you a little measure of faith in your spirit man to believe and Then your free will click triggered that faith You became born again and an adopted child of God on the spot Amen. When God gave you that little faith in your spirit man you could have pushed it out and many people do They hear the witness from somebody they hear the Word of God Some of you are listening to me tonight, and you're kind of pushing it out That's your free will and God will allow you to do that Because everybody has free will But if you push us out your Heavenly Father is going to be disappointed and hurt because he got all these blessings he wants to give you. He's got all these things Jesus paid for you to have. He wants you to be like Wigglesworth. His attitude was, every resource the Holy Ghost has got is available to me. You have boldness tonight and confidence. You can just walk boldly in to the throne of grace Amen. and you can get mercy for God and find grace to help you yes. in your time of need Amen. you just walk in mm -hmm. I'm here yeah. you're here what do you need what do you want I'm here because I live here I've been adopted in this family Where do you live? Lim Gundo. Who lives there? Me. Anybody else? Yes, Scott. 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 You got a key to the apartment? Yes. All right. Well, I'm reading his mind right now. You know what he does? He goes home tonight. He pulls out his key. He walks up to his door. Why? He doesn't walk up shaking. Oh, panicking. No. Hey, here's the key. Why? This is my apartment. This is my house. Click. This is my door. He just walks in without hesitating. Why? It's his house. You ever done that? You just walk home and you walk in like you own the place? You, you do own it. It's your house. Hello? It's your house. <laughs> Keys in the New Testament are symbols 
symbolic of authority correct Jesus used the word key when he said I have the keys of hell and death I have authority over that see his authority over death saved my daughter thanks to your prayers a week ago they said she died Thursday morning no I have the keys of hell and death and fa father said it's not death time yet it's your apartment it's your house you own a house yeah. Not right now. You? No. You own a house? No. You own a house? What? You got any keys to it? No. You live in that house? Is it a house legally yours? No. You got a deed to it? No. Did it go through escrow and it was all was it all recorded? <laughs> <laughs> huh? It's my house. It's your house? God's trying to tell you hey, this is your house. I Built this house for you. You got the keys to the house It's your house Amen. You just walk in Amen. It's my house of course I walk in Do you walk in your neighbor's house like that? No. Uh, not if you don't want to get shot. <laughs> no, you walk into your house. You just walk in. Hey, I'm here. It's my house. You have a family? Well, that's a different story. Then people are fighting over the house. You know? It's a war zone in there. <laughs> Kids are trying to take over the house. <laughs> they don't understand. It's your house. <laughs> See? Kids don't get it. Kids are stupid. <laughs> I know I used to be a kid <laughs> It's your house you own the house God's telling you listen. That's your seat. I, I I Saw you before you were born. I gave you a new name and your names on that seat That's your seat. No one will ever be in that seat. No one will ever sit in it Even if you don't want the seat it goes to glory empty So you just walk in I come boldly to the throne of grace Amen. where I will obtain mercy yes. and find grace to help in time only why because I'm part of the family yes, right yes. kids are like that kids go into their house they go to the first spot which is refrigerator <laughs> they pull the refrigerator on. they start looking around this is what kids do They see something that clicks somewhere in their mind they reach for it something to drink something to eat. They don't even hesitate They don't hesitate if you try to reach something they'll shut the door in your hand <laughs> Why the, They understand what you don't about Christ. That's my house That's my mom's hand. I just smashed. That's my house. That's my refrigerator And this is now my drink <laughs> so, there throw that out and that's my mom throwing my trash out <laughs> Is anybody getting this it's your house Amen. You belong there yeah. you live there Amen. you're you're a daughter of God right. You've been adopted into the family of God you've been sanctified yeah. by the blood of Jesus Christ You were ransomed yeah. off the slavery block of sin yeah. My God you are a big deal well, I don't feel like that's a rejection demon from childhood get him out tonight He lies all day long. He says constant negative things to you. He doesn't want you to know what I shared with you tonight He's shaking in his boots right now. He's got constipation <laughs> Yeah, he shook up tonight And he better be shook up tonight the Holy Ghost gonna show up here kick his face in Listen, you could go in right there. It's your house. What's your responsibility to God? Let's close it out. <laughs> Romans 11. Behold the goodness and severity of God. On those which fell, it was severe. 
but toward you he gave goodness. What's he talking about there? Nation of Israel, the Gentiles. Yeah. God offered America to the Gentiles, so to speak. They said to the, uh, excuse me, Jews, they said, no, we don't want it. Yeah. Well, he said, well, okay. Paul said, I'm just going to take the gospel to the Gentiles. Gentiles. Mm -hmm. What happened? Judgment fell on the Jews. Yeah. They murdered their own Messiah. Mm -hmm. The Romans wiped them out. Mm -hmm. They've been in nothing but turmoil ever since. And it will continue right up through to the second coming, the Bible says. Mm -hmm. Jews will be constantly tormented till the very end when they're saved. Not you. Uh -uh. You're on the glory train. Yeah. You, you walk in boldly to the throne of grace. Yeah. Why? They didn't want it. And you did. So you accepted it. What did he say? Paul said, if you continue, translation, stay on this train. Don't go to that one. Because it's like a dog vomiting. It's like a pig wallowing in the mud. Don't do it. Right? It says, if you continue on that train. Otherwise, you would be cut off. Translation, you move from this seat to that one. The devil's got a seat on this train waiting for you with your name on it. Father's got a chair waiting for you on that train. He's, and they're both waiting for you to choose. They also, if they abide not, still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. Translation, if the Jews decide to get on the glory train, they're still welcome to do it. Amen. All Jews are welcome to come to their Messiah and receive every benefit God's given us. There's no difference between Jews or Greeks. You are all one in Christ. Amen. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. True? And this, te this grace teaches us. Paiduo is the Greek word. It means to discipline. Since you are all adopted into the family of God, and you are his daughter, and you are his son, because you are his children, he has to train you. Every parent trains their child if they love them. If they don't love them, they let them run amok. Hello? If you don't love your children, you do not discipline them. You let them run amok. Okay? Over the last 20 years, public schools, attendance, Private schools. Why? Running amok. No discipline. You can't even whip a kid anymore for doing something horrible. You can't spank him. Correct? Look at a lawsuit. Right? Oh, I'm an older person. When I was a kid, they didn't have them rules. Uh uh. No, sir. I got there a little early. One morning, fourth grade. Fourth grade. I thought I owned the world. I picked up a snowball, put it together in Millbury, Ohio. Millbury Grade School. Fourth grade. I was out in front of the school, and some guy walking in. Phew, I had a good arm. Bang, nailed the dude. <laughs> bell rung. The bell ringing meant you got to get into class, right? I'm walking up the steps to get in the front after I nailed that guy. He was, he was mad at me. And I said, well, you should have ducked. <laughs> I'm walking up the steps of the school, Millbury Grade School, Millbury, Ohio. I feel a hand. A hand of God. Coming down out of the heavens, it seemed like, 
grabbing me here on my jacket winter coat lifting me off the ground I was walking up the steps <laughs> free motion the principal had pulled in just as I wound up it was Nolan Ryan in Millbury Ohio as I got to here he pulls in and sees it and the guy hit in the head threw one back at me and I ducked the principal had in his office uh, paddle you ever seen one of those paddles with a handle there and the holes yeah. in the thing? Yeah. The ones with the holes in it didn't have any air slowing it down. <laughs> <laughs> he looks at me and he says, you know you're not supposed to be throwing the snowballs. Yes, I do. Mm. Suddenly, I, my attitude completely changed. I was a humble, gentle person. <laughs> begging for mercy. His response to me was bend over <laughs> Now whenever you hear those two words bend over you you got to hope you're not in prison first of all It's it's bad there <laughs> Bend over is done But if you're in fourth grade and you hear the word bend over And then you hear the word grab your ankles <laughs> I'm too old now to grab my ankles. I can't get down there anymore, but when I was in fourth grade I just went right down and grabbed them and all I heard was a whiff, whiff, kind of a wind, wind noise. And I heard a sound. <sighs> Go out in the hall and bring, tell him to come in. I went out in the hall. Have you ever walked like that? The pain was shooting all everywhere. It hit, boom. Squeezing my fanny, I hold it. Oh. I got outside the hall. I'm up against the wall. He wants to talk to you. I'm standing out in the hall, tensing. I hear a crack in there. I hear a kid crying. I didn't cry. I was too stunned. <laughs> He come out, go to class. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, I'm going to class. Walking down the hall. It was, it was embarrassing. It was embarrassing. I was humiliated. Okay, but I never threw a snowball again. Hello, public schools. Attendance going down. They're allowed to throw snowballs at the teacher and hit him over the head with a bucket. Private schools, correct? Yeah. I'm not making a political statement, I'm just making an observation. Yeah. This is how the system's working. God sometimes has to allow. Ow! Oh! Ow! Oh! Why does he allow that? Love. Love. See, the principal didn't really want to do that. He didn't go to school that day hoping to get Mike and the other guy. No, it, it was part of his job. He cared. That was his job. Your Heavenly Father, you're not part of his job. It's all love. So when a disaster moves into your life, it's something to learn from and to embrace. Because there's something there to learn and there's an opportunity to grow. Father doesn't just bang just because he's bored. It never happens. It's always something for your own good. And by disciplining you, you will then deny ungodliness. I never threw another snowball in fourth grade again. On school property <laughs> and it teaches us God's grace and his discipline teaches us to deny sinning deny worldly lusts to deny these things that's the purpose of grace 
See, in the mega churches and in other churches, they teach greasy grace where they're saying, oh, it's okay, you sin, and then that's all fine. Come on in. Doesn't matter what you do, just tithe. Just, no, this isn't greasy grace. This is disciplining grace. Yes. Yes. This is God's grace given to you so that you will deny ungodliness. Come on. And worldly lust you are changed because you have been adopted into the family of God You are not this kid anymore running amok. You are now this Child living in the family of God. You're changing into the image of your Heavenly Father That's what godliness is. It's God likeness Is this helping anybody? God's discipline allows us to live soberly What's that mean? Sanely, common sense, righteously, godly in this present age. Why? Because your citizenship is in heaven. You're on this train now, yeah, right. not right. that one. Oh, They're throwing snowballs in this train. This one they don't. Oh, How'd that go? Yes. <laughs> Any questions over here before we close? Any questions in this section before we close? Any questions in that section before we close? Thank you. Let's pray then. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Father God, what I did tonight, I done the best I could. And I tried my hardest to show your children and me, I'm your child, how much, how much you love us and how much you care. I did it to stop these spirits of rejection that torment people's lives. I did it to help my friends realize who they are in Christ. I did the best I could, but my best is never good enough. And without the anointing of the Spirit of the Lord, without the Holy Ghost, my teaching is in vain. I don't have any skills or abilities. All these come from you. And I'm going to pray now, Lord, for the people here tonight who are living a defeated Christian life. And they saw these scriptures and they now know there's no reason to do it anymore. They have been chosen and set apart before they were born. You specifically chose them. They are sitting on the train to glory. They have the Holy Spirit. They are born again. But they've been listening to demons tell them negative things about themselves. And they have been living below where they should be living. Grace teaches us that we are to deny ungodliness. We are to deny sin and we are to live righteously and godly in this present world because we are the recipients of the ministry of reconciliation that's what you gave us and I'm praying right now Lord in the name of Jesus for every every one of my friends every child of yours right here right now who has got a drain that's plugged They got a drain plugged. Something is controlling them. Negativity, lust, sex, food, depression, guilt, shame. Something is getting the best of them. And tonight they have decided to come boldly to the throne of grace. And obtain mercy 
and find grace to help them in their time of need. Tonight, they're going to change and repent. Right now, in the name of Jesus. They see they're supposed to be living in heavenly places. They're supposed to be above all of this. They see it now. <coughs> they see it. Their, their family on this earth is not their family. They're just relatives now. Their family on this earth, he's just their dad. And if their dad left them or hurt them, it doesn't matter because their heavenly father is now their father, not their dad. Their dad's a relative. Their dad is temporal. Their family's temporal. Their lives are temporal. And you're calling them tonight to eternity, to change for eternity. The father and the dad is the most important person in the home. I know that, Lord. I've been a counselor for decades. But the most important person in the family of God is you. You are our heavenly father. And your son ransomed us from the block of slavery to sin and damnation and death. And we are your children now. And we are not to live in a worldly manner anymore. Blocking up our conduit to the Holy Spirit and our anointing, our giftings, and our destiny and our call. And we're going to change tonight. Somebody in this room is going to make a major change and fulfill their destiny by living out who they really are after tonight. Who are you really? You're, a, you're a, an adopted child of God. And you can come to him with Abba. You are the firstborn. And Father used the same name for you, he used on Jesus. You are the daughter and son. You are his beloved. And you've been living like a failure. And you're going to repent of it right now. You're going to do it right this second. In Jesus' holy name, I am going to fulfill my destiny as a child of God. And I'm going to repent of living like this right now. I'm going to repent of living like this right now. I've been living way below my calling. Way below my calling. I've been living, compromising my faith. I've been frustrating the grace of God because I've been compromising my faith. And I'm so sorry, Lord. Lord Jesus, please forgive me. Please forgive me, dear God. I am so Incredibly sorry. Father, please forgive me. Please have mercy on me, Lord. Please touch me right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you right now, move through the deliverance center now like you do every week, like you did yesterday. Beautiful. We cherish your presence, sweet Holy Spirit. Move right now. Each person that needs to be convicted I call down the conviction of God upon your soul right now. Conviction is God's love disciplining you to change. Are you addicted to something? What is it? TV, food, sex. What's, what's the deal? What's the addiction? What's the addiction? Taking offenses? What's the addiction? Self-pity? What's the addiction? Criticizing yourself? Being hard on yourself? You're going to repent of it right now. Right this second. Come on. God forgive me God forgive me There's something blocking your healing. What is it? What's blocking it? Let's nail it to the cross together. Something's blocking your deliverance. What is it? Something's blocking it. What is it? Say it Just confess it if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins He will cleanse us from all unrighteousness You have been given the ministry of reconciliation 
He swapped out your sins for his holiness. Come on. Just confess it If you need to leave God love you tonight. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for your donations The Holy Ghost is move, getting ready to make his move here Sometimes he starts out slow. That's fine. All I got to do is be patient Wait it out a minute and he comes he shows up he wants to help you. He cares about you. Come on, just repent of it. Just repent of it. Come on now. Just repent of it. Come on. What, what, what's the issue? Is it lust? What is it? Porn? Is it chronic masturbation? Is it porn? What's going on? Is it drugs? Is it food? What is it? What's blocking you? What's blocking your drain? Come on. Just repent of it. God have mercy on my soul. Father, forgive me. Say it. Dear Jesus, forgive me. Dear Jesus, forgive me. Help me, dear Lord. Help me, dear Lord. I'm living below my sonship. I'm living beneath. I'm beneath my daughtership. I am a daughter of the Most High God, but I'm not living like it. I'm not living like it. Come on, just repent of it. Raise your hand if you need to repent of that. You're not. You're living below. You're living below. You're calling. Come on now. Raise your hands. Father God, in Jesus' name, there's the hands, Lord. Holy Spirit, go to each person right now. It's holding their hands up. You're living below, and you know you are a son of God. You are beloved in the eyes of God, yet you're living like a carnal son or daughter of God. You are missing your destiny. You're missing your calling. Come on now. Just repent of it. Sweet Jesus, help me, Lord. God Almighty, help me. Help me, dear God. Help me, dear God. God, forgive me. YouTubers, just pray like I am. Dear Jesus, I'm so sorry. YouTubers, confess it. Just confess your sin. Confess it quickly. Face it. Confess it. Father, in Jesus' mighty name. I renounce living a carnal life of sonship here. I am not the son of this family I was born in. I am a child of God, and I am now in the family of the heavens, not the earth. I am heavenly now, not the earthly, but I've been living like I'm earthly, and I repent of it right at this moment. In the name of Jesus, I repent of it. Say, say it. YouTubers, put your hand on your body. I command this demon of sin Paul talks about in Romans chapter 7. The demon of sin caused him to do things he didn't want to do. The things he wanted to do, he couldn't do. The things he didn't want to do, those were the things he did. That's the power of the demon of sin. I come against you, you spirit of sin, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I come against you right now in Jesus' mighty name. Come on out. Come out of there. Come out in Jesus' name. The demon that compromises. I command you to come out. The demon that compromises. Come out of that body right now. You come out in Jesus' mighty name. You stop blocking the faith healer's hands. The hands that should be healing the sick. Stop blocking it right now. Stop blocking it. Come out in Jesus' name. The demon of sin, I come against you. The blood of the Son of God. Demon of sin, I bind your power. Come out. Come out. Food demons. Gluttony, I curse you. Come out in Jesus' name. Rejection demons from childhood, I curse you. Come out in the name of the Lord. Rejection, come out. They are accepted in the beloved. Rejection, I command you to come out. Rejection, I command you to come out. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out of there. Get out of that body. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Go. Come out of that body right now. Rejection, come out. Get out of there. Come out. Unclean spirit, come out. I said, come out of that stomach. Get out of there. Anger, rage, and hatred. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Get out of that body right now. Come out quickly. Come out right now. Come out right now. 
Come out of there. Hurry up. Go. Come out of that body right now. Both of them. Come out of there. Come on out quickly. Just repent of it. Just confess it. Do it. Do it. Just confess it. it. The Holy Ghost will not come to you until you confess it. Just confess it. YouTubers, Facebook, Facebook, you're in your living room. Get on your knees. Facebook, get on your knees. Get on your knees. Facebook, YouTube, get on your knees and confess it. Father God, heal me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Help me, Lord. God, help me. Now listen, the, the spirits are going to come after her before you should born. Come on now. Get him out of there. I command you. You come out of my baby right now. Satan, I command you to come out of my child. Come out of my child right now in the name of Jesus. Hurry up. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. Repent of it. YouTuber, put your hand on your stomach and your chest right now. You command that demon of fear to come out. Anxiety, fear, shame, guilt. Those are fear demons. Command that spirit of fear to come out. Go in Jesus' holy name. Anxiety, come out. Phobias, come out. Get out of there. Get out of there, I said. Go. Come out quicker. Come out of that body right now. Hurry up. Rage and anger and hate. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Get out of that body right now. God, Satan, let's go. Get out of here. Come on. This is the daughter of God. Get out of that body right now. Come out of there. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out. This is the daughter of God. Come out of that body right now. Generational demons, generational curses, bad men. Come on, ladies. Every man you ever slept with who had demons, they transferred into your body. Get them out right now. Now. Unclean spirit of adultery, come out. Adultery, come out. Unclean spirit of adultery, let's go. A demon of pornography, out of there. Come out. Addiction to food, I command you, unclean spirit. Come on out now. Come out now. Food demons, come out of there. Sugar, addiction to sugar and sweets, come out of that body right now. You rotten devil, you're trying to give them diabetes because you're trying to give them to eat sweets and sugars and chocolate. Come out! Diabetes, come out in Jesus' mighty name. Rejection, low self esteem, guilt, shame, come out! Get out of his back right now. Come out of that back. Get out of that baby. Get out of that baby right now. Come out of that baby right now. Get out of her. Come out of her. Go. Come out. You won't have her. You will not have her in Jesus' name. Come out. Get out of that body. Satan, come out. Go now. Fornication. Adultery. Out. No self esteem, self pity. Out! Get out of that body. Seducing spirits, I curse you. Come out of the brain. Come out of the mind. Bipolar, come out! Schizophrenia, come out! Voices, voices of demons. Come. Get out of there, you demon of fear. Come out right now. Come out of that body right now. Hurry up. Hurry up. 
Fear, fear, come out. Fear, go. Come on out. Fear. Come on in. Fear, come out. Hurry up. Get out. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Satan, you lose that baby right now. You lose that baby right this second. Come out. Come out. Come on, we're going to pray, pray in tongues now. Pray with me. Satan, lose your hold. Satan, lose your hold. We come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Satan, lose your hold now. You rotten devil, lose your hold now. 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 Come out in Jesus' name. Get out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. from childhood. Rejection. Low self-esteem. Humiliation. Embarrassment. Go. Get out of my body right now. Satan, lose your hold. Satan, lose your hold. Get out of my body right now. Hurry up. Get out of there. Self-hatred. Lucifer. Self-hatred. Greed. Greed. Money. Material things. I curse you. Fail. I command you to fail. Love of money. Love of material things. I bind your power. Fear of poverty. I curse you. Come out. I break the vow of poverty over your life. I crush it now. Satan. Break your hold. Loose your hold. Come on now, let's pray together. Don't the Hello, Moshandai. On the Ramasira Bororia. Get out Come out quicker. Faster. Come out quicker. On the Ramasira Bororia. Out. Get out of that body right now. Come out of her womb. Come out of her genitals right now. Every ugly man that ever touched this body, come out right now. All of them. The users, the users, come out right now, quickly, come out quickly, every ugly man, oh, there he comes, come on out, get out of there, come out, adultery, come out, fornication, come out, pornography, come out, lost, chronic masturbation, I bind your power, go, I bind your power, go. What you need, honey? Huh? I need to quit smoking cigarettes. It's the last thing to go. Oh, no, no, there's something else in there. Though. That's not the last thing to go. All right, what is it? Okay. Now, did you used to hate yourself when you were younger? Yeah. Why? Well, because that's how I, I, I told you my story. I mean, my parents, they told me it's worth nothing. So, yeah. You know. And that chronic negativity, it's still there, isn't it? Um, it can come and go. Yeah. I mean, it comes and goes, yeah. 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 And uh, you are a daughter of your heavenly father. Oh, yes. And when that comes and goes, that hurts him. Right. Like it would hurt you or me if so somebody treated our kid like that. Right. That would hurt. Yeah. And that's hurting him. It still, it still does. It, it's there. Wow. Come on now. Raise your hand. Dear Jesus, I'm so sorry. So I have these bad feelings about myself once in a while. When I have these feelings, I know that that wounds your soul. I'm so sorry. I still have these negative emotions from demons. And I eat to comfort myself. I do many things to comfort myself. It's all sin because the Holy Spirit is my comforter. Not 
other thing. Whoa, there it goes. There it goes. Come out of there. Get out of that body right now. I said, come out. Come out of that body right now. Come out. Come out right now. Get out of that body. Come out of that body right now. Get out of her. Come out of that body right now. Come out. Get out of there. Go now. Come out of that body right now. Hurry up. Satan, loose the woman of God. Self hatred, self disgust, hating my body, hating my body. I repair of it. I repair of it. Hating my body, I repair of it. Hating my looks, I repair of it. God forgive me. God forgive me. Father God, send the Holy Ghost and the power. Send the power. Hurry, Lord. Send the power. Send the power. Oh. Food demons, come out of that body right now. There he is. Food demon, come on out. Lift out of him. Come on, it's fine. Come out of his body. Come out, hunchback spirit. Come out. Come out. Spirit of infirmity, I command you. Come out. Come out of him right now. Come out of that body right now, I said. There he is. Come on out. Come out of his spine. Come out of his spine. Here he comes. Here he comes. He's coming out of his spine. He's coming out of his spine. There he goes. Come on out. Get out of there. Come on out of his spine. There it goes. There it goes. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Come out. Go. Go. Come out there right now. Go. Go. Come out of that baby. Come out of that baby. Come out of that stomach. Come out of there. Come out, you spirit of lust. Come out, you spirit of lust. Come out. Come on out. Come out of there. Come on out. Get out of that body right now. Hurry up. Hold that. Come out of that body right now. Breathe. Big breath. Come out of your lungs. Come out. Come out of your lungs. Hurry up. Come out of there. Hurry up. Come on. She is a woman of God. You come out of there right now. You don't own her anymore. Come out of that body right now. Hurry up. Come out of there. Come out. Come out of her stomach. Come out of her guts. Come on out. Come out. Come out of her. Come out of that spine. Spirit of deformity. Come out of there right now. Go. Come out. Demons in the spine. Go. Come on out. Demons for the mom and dad. Go. Mother and dad. Come out. Come on out. Mother. Mother. Come out. Hurry up. Mother. Come out. Come out. There she is. Come on out. Mother, come out of there. Every demon from your mother, come out. Come out. Come out. Every spirit from your mother. Gluttony. Using food as a comfort. I command you to come out. Hurry up. Every demon from her dad, go. Come on out. Come on out. Every spirit from the dad, go. Rejection, low self esteem, self hatred, self pity, self pity, feeling sorry for myself. Come out. Self pity, come out. There he is. Here he comes. Come on out. Lift out of her. Lift out of there. Self pity, come on out. Self pity, come out. Right now. Hurry up. Get out of that body right now. You come out of that spine. Get out of the spine. Out of the spine. Right now. Go. Go. 
Come on, streamers. Good to see you again. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. again. You guys are in and out. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming back. Great, great message tonight. I, I wrote yeah. everything down. I was like, this, this one is Excellent. like Love numero you. uno. It's like Good. God is. Uh, Good to see you again. Yeah, you too. We brought a friend with us. Yeah, so happy about Tracy. Oh, she's oh, not yeah. coming. She, she made it. Thank yeah. you for She's friend. home now, right? Oh yeah, she's Yay. home. She's doing good. Awesome. Where's your friend? Uh, Where's your friend? Oh, he, uh, he's in the hallway. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for coming back. Thank you. Oh, God, forgive me. YouTubers, Lord, forgive me. you just put your hands on your body. The Bible says in Mark chapter 16, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out demons. In my name, in my name, they shall lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. You are a child of God, and that verse applies to you. And you can lay your hands on yourself. Get out of that spine right now, out of her neck. Come out of there right now. Come out of that neck right this second. Come out of her brain. Negative thoughts, come out. Hurry up. Come on out. You can lay your hands on your body. So, streamers, listen to me. Put Thanks for coming. Nice Thank to meet you. you. Yeah, Queens. You. You're a friend yeah, of theirs. Are. You're a friend of ours. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank Love you, you guys. You. you can put your hands on your body, just like that verse says. You can put your hands. On, you can put your hands on your own body, and you can cast anything out of your body you choose to cast out. You have free will. You have faith. You have the Word of God. You have the anointing. And if you repent of your sin or whatever is blocking your drain, your conduit, whatever the block is, you speak in tongues. Okay, just pray after me. Borabasha. Telo Masi. Bengaba. Bandoria. Bengo Masia. Okay, did you notice how easily you were saying that? Yeah. Let's do it again and you just add some syllables on your own. You just relax and let it go. Just relax and let it go. Ready? Just like that, good. There it is, right there. Keep going. Keep singing. There it is. Good. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. There it is. That's him right there. That's him right there. That's the Holy Ghost right there. Receive the Holy Ghost. Go receive the Holy Ghost. Right there he is. Father God, drive out everything that's evil or wicked in this body. Drive it out right now, all of it. Oh, glory. Receive the Holy Ghost. Streamers, you can put your hand on your body, just like that. You can put your hand on your body. Pick, find out where the pain is. Put your hand down there. Where the pain is. I command you. I command you as a son of God, as a daughter of God. I command you. I command you. Spirit, come out of me. Sickness, come out of me. I command you. Use your hands. Where are you doing? Like a valve being open. You come out now. All of it. All of it. Terrible. Go. Bring it. Go! Negative thoughts. Go! It's just hell, hell. I, I got a job, got fired. You know, just... Let it go. It's all... Let it go. Why did you get fired? 
the black. Okay. This is a pattern. Rick was talking about this yesterday about women who have to go back to bad men. This is a pattern for me. I always get jobs and get fired. Down the street, I worked there two years ago, Phoenix College. It did continue. This one got fired. Start got fired June 3rd, got fired July 1st. It, but this is not this is about the tenth or fifteenth time. Why is um, well, I can tell you why in the natural, but I don't think it's an issue in the natural. It's the actual, it's the issue of the spiritual. Um, I have you know, I have irritable bowel syndrome and I also have um, so I use the bathroom in the patient's room because they did not come to relieve me for my break and they fired me. Yeah. Now the irritable bowel syndrome is a spirit. It is. So that has to come out of there before you get another uh, nursing job. Yeah, well, yeah. Right? Yeah, you're right. I do. There's something blocking the whole thing. And that should have come out before you took that job. Yeah. I need deliverance before I take the job because it'll happen again. There you go. All right. You one clean spirit hiding in my intestines. You're hiding in there and you cost me another job. You stole another job from me. That's like 15 jobs you stole from me. You always come up with something to steal my steal my work. You always put negative thoughts in my mind telling me, hey, you're going to get fired again. I don't receive that. I'm a child of God. Now I repent of that thinking and believing those lies. And I have authority over you. I want you out of my body. I want you out of my body in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out of my body right now. Come up right now, I said. Come up. Come up right now. Here he comes. Come on up. Come on up. Irritable bowel syndrome. I command you. Come out. Come on. Get out of my body. Get out of my body, I said. I am a child of God. I'm a daughter of God. I have authority over you. I command you to come out of my stomach. You're not going to cost me another job. Go now. Get out of me. Come on. Just get mad. Get out of me. There you go. Tell him. Talk to him. Get out of my body. Hurry up. You get out of my body. You're not stealing another job. Come out now. Right now. Come out right now. A drain blockage tonight. There's something blocking that. Yeah. Going forward. I don't know what. Yeah, here's the head of the drain right there. You just stopped attacking him and start talking to me again. Right? You just did it. And I don't know what it is. You know, I do, it's, he, it's a spirit in there. We know what it is. It's him. He's doing it. They're the mobile syndrome spirit. That's all That's all a demon. That's all emotions. Yeah, I think that it is. It is yeah. That but we can't get him out of you, unless you turn on him. Are you going to turn on him? I have repented for what I think how what? I let it in. What? You what? I repented of what, how I let it in. Okay, good. Well, then we get, then, he, then he's got no legal right. Let's get him. Go. I spit. No, no, that's not it. He's still in there. He's got to come out. You already repented. Come on. There he goes. Come on out. There. Good. Come out of there right now. Where well, you're not taking no for an answer, are you? Get out of that body right now. Come out. Come out of my stomach, I said. I told you to come out of my stomach. Get out of my body right this second. Come out right now. Right now. Hey, what's going on with him? I got ten and nine and ears. My ears are ringing. I'm, I'm just going through a lot lately, man. I'm going to attack. Thank you. Man. Nice. Hi. I got to go. My wife's okay. waiting for me. Okay, okay. nice meeting you. What's your name? Huh? What's your name? Robert Jennings. Here we call him Papa. Oh. Yeah. Now, uh, you've had a pretty sinful history, haven't you? Huh? You've had a pretty sinful background. Oh, yeah. Been horrible, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, come on up in front for a minute. <clears throat> just get mad at him. 
get mad at him hey now listen uh, you you've lived a long life how old are you 60 60 yeah almost 63. yeah so you've got like 50 something years of hardcore sinning yeah right and it's been bad and uh whenever you uh serve satan that opens door, a door that opens a door to evil spirits and they get into your head. Yeah, I know. I've been here a bunch of times. I've been here. Yeah. Now, now, what we need is, is, is you some godly sorrow. Okay? Dear Jesus, I am so sorry I wasted my life. I am so sorry. Spirit of tenderness, come out of it. Come on out. Come out of the head. Come out now. Right now. Come out. There he is. Come out, everybody. Come out, I said. Come out now in Jesus' mighty name. Come out. Out. Come out. Out. In Jesus' name. Come out. Come out of the stomach. Evil. Come out of there. Evil. Wickedness. Come out. Come out. Insanity. Come out. Come out. Come out. Sit down right here. Insanity. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. There he is. Come out of his head. Evil. Evil. Come out. Satan. Lose your hold. Evil. Wickedness. Pornography. Drugs. Alcohol. Crime. Come out. Come out. Come out of his throat. Come out quickly. Come out quickly. Come out of there. Come out of the ears. Go. Out. Come out. Come on out. Get out of there. Hurry up. Come out. Go. Come out of there. Come out. Come out. Keep coming. Every demon. Go now. Out. 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 Break. Break your hold. Break your hold of him. Break your hold. Come out of his ears. Go in the name of Jesus. There it is. Keep coughing. Come out. Come on out. Go. Come on out. Go. Come on out. Go. Out. Come out. Come on out. Come out. Come out. Come on out. Hold that. Come out right now. Come out. Come out right now. This guy's a monster. And he's got everything in there. Okay. Lust, come out. Anger, there it comes. Glory to God. Evil, come out of the body. Evil. Evil, come out. Evil. The demons are coming out of this guy over here. He's lived up over 50 years in hardcore sin. Over 50 years. That guy's committed every sin in the book. You name a sin, that guy's done it. You name a sin, that guy there has done it. Guess what? The Holy Ghost is all over the guy. Mercy is hunting the guy down, and the demons are coming out. That guy is a hardcore sinner. That guy right there. That guy's a hardcore sinner. <laughs> Love you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thanks for coming back. I, will, I, will, uh, I, I may not be back for a couple of months because I have to go to the hospital. Okay. Surgery, so I'll be laid up a couple of months. Okay. okay. And you'll be back. Yeah. Love you. That guy there is a hardcore sinner. Yeah, that guy sinned ten times more than you have. And the Spirit of the Lord is all over him. If that guy can sin ten times as much as you, you can be healed and delivered. You too. Listen to me. Listen to me. Demons are flying out of the guy over there. This guy sins like crazy. He's had five decades of nothing but sinning. Mercy rejoices against judgment. Mercy rejoices against judgment. 
God's mercy overcomes judgment for sin. You can be healed. You can be delivered. Come on. Satan, come out. Get out. Come out there quicker. Come out. Come out faster. Every bit of it. Every bit of it come out. Every bit of it. Come on out. Glory to God. Come on. Just get mad at the devil. You've gotten mad at everybody in your life at least once. Your parents, your spouse, your kids, your employer. I mean, you got mad at everybody. Okay, that was sin. Okay? Sin. Now you're going to get mad at the devil. That's what God wants you to do. To get mad at the devil. Thank you, God. Hey, how you Hi. Hi. What you need, honey? My brother and brother being tormented by the voices. The voices? Yeah. Well, what kind of sin has he been in? What's been going on? Um, I'll do my life for all of them. I'll all your life? been. What have you been doing? Oh, you get involved in witchcraft? Uh, witchcraft. Sorcery? New Age? Yeah. Okay. Now listen, uh, th those are really bad demons, real bad ones. So your case, your case is serious. He's really bad. Okay. So we're going to have to repent really hard here. Raise your hand, dear, dear Lord Jesus. I'm so sorry. I am so sorry for what I've done. I'm so sorry. God forgive me. God forgive me, Lord. I'm so sorry. Dear Jesus, I'm so sorry. Help me, Lord. Forgive me for witchcraft and sorcery. Forgive me for pornography and lust, adultery and fornication. God, forgive me for the courting the dark side. Have mercy upon me, Lord. Deliver me tonight, Father. Come on out, Spirit. Familiar spirits of witchcraft and sorcery, come out. You heard him repent. Come on out, let's go. Come out. Come on out, quickly. You heard him repent. Come out of his throat. Come on out. Come out of his stomach right now. Demon of fear, go. Voices, stop talking to him and come out. Come on out. Stop talking to him and come out. Come out of his face. Come out of the face. Hurry up. Get out of there. Come on out. Come out. Take a breath and blow. <clears throat> blow. Come on out. Come out of his lungs. Evil, come out. Evil, come out. Stop talking to him and come out. Demon. Come on that body right now. Come on that body. Come on that body. Come on that body right now. Sin and wickedness and evil. Come on out. Evil. Come out of that body right now. Evil. Come out of there. Evil. Come out right now. Evil. Come out. Evil. Sorcery. Witchcraft. Go. Get out of there. Sorcery. Come out of his stomach. Come out of his throat. Quickly. Come out. Sinning. Come out. Living in sin. Come out. Come out right now. All of it. Go. Come out of there. Right now. Come on out right now. Go. Evil. Come out. Satan, come out. Come out of there. Right now. Come on out. Hurry up. I renounce these voices. I renounce witchcraft. I renounce serving Satan. I renounce sinning. I renounce wickedness. I renounce it. I reject it. I don't want to die and go to hell. I don't want to die and go to hell. I don't want to get on the train. That train to hell. God save me. God have mercy upon my soul. Come on out of there. You get out of my body right now. Hurry up, get out of there. Hurry up. Quicker. Come out quicker. Come out quicker. Get out of that body right now. Hurry up. Come on. Come on out. Get out of there. 
Come out of there. Come out. Come out of there. Come out of there. Hurry up. Go. Out. Quickly. Quickly come out. Quickly. Sorcery. Drugs. Alcohol. Drugs. Get out of that body right now. Come out of there. Stop talking to her. Come out. Come out of that body. Get out of there. Hurry up. Hurry up. Come on. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out of that body right now. Tell him to go. Tell him to go. All the demons. Out of that body. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out of that body right now. Go. Right now. Get out of him. Get out of him right now. I block you in Jesus' mighty name. Come out. Come out in Jesus. You need to leave. You need to get out of him right now. You need to get out of him right now. Get out of there and come out. Quicker. Come out quickly. Every bit of it. Come out. Every bit of it. Come out. Every bit of it. All of it. Every bit of it. All of it. Every bit of it. Right now. Right now. Come out. Get out of your mind. Come out of his body right now. Get out of his mind. Get out of his mind. Get out of his back. Come out of his back. Get out of his Come out of his back. Come out of those feet. Go. You have out of that brain right now. Come out of that body right now. They need to be gone. Come out of there. They need to flee out of your body. This is what you Go now. People, come out right now. Go. Hallelujah. Flee out of your body right now. Come on out. You do not want anybody in your life. Come on out. That's causing you harm. Torture, it's causing Amen. Pain, so you need to get they out need to get out. out of your flesh. They need to get out right now. What do you say? What do you say? You don't feel it? I, I, I think Is it I gone? Get it out. I guess. I feel it. I can't oh. get up enough. All right. Enough. Tell, Je tell Jesus you love him. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Thank, thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. Hurry up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Get out of that body right now. Come out of that head. You stop talking to him. Come on. We demand it all right this second. We command it all right now. Come on out. Satan, come out of that body. In the name of Jesus, come on out. Thank you, Jesus. Come on out right now. Get out of it. Get out of it. Let it out. Come out. Let it out. Get it out. Hurry up. Get it out of you right now. Amen. Get out of there right now. Get it out. Go now. Get it out. Go now in the name of Jesus. Come out. Get out of here. Come out. Get out of here right now. Get out of there. Hallelujah. Get out of here right now. Get out right now. Glory to God. Right now. Come on out. Come on out. Come on out, stomach. Come out of her tummy right this second. Come on out right now. Come out of her right now. Right now. Come out of her tummy. Hurry up. Get out of her back. Come out of her. There he comes. Here he comes. There he comes. Glory to God. Here he comes. Come on out. Go. Here he comes. Get out of there. There he comes. Glory to God. Come on out. Come on out. Come on out. Come out. Come on out. Come out of there. Come out. Hurry up. Satan, lose your hold. Loose your hold. Say it. Get out of him right now. Loose your hold. Loose my body right now. Go. How you doing? How's he doing? All right. Thank you. Uh, I, I think I got it out. I can't get nothing up. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Is it out? Did it come out? A lot, yeah. What's left? I don't know. <laughs> what were you into? Um, what are you talking about? Like, like, what am I struggling with right now? No, in your past. A lot. A lot of stuff. Drugs? No. Alcohol? No. Men? No. Self-hatred? Yeah. Low self-esteem? Yeah. Did you hate your body? Yeah. Go ahead and repent of it. Dear God, I repent in Jesus' name of body dysmorphia, hating myself. God, forgive me. Please forgive me for my sins, God. Please forgive me for Forgive me for hating myself. I repent of it. And I want this rejection demon out. Rejection, come out now. Go now. Rejection, there he is. Here he comes. It's rejection. It's rejection, spirit. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Rejection, come out. Rejection. Come on out. Low self esteem. Low self esteem. Come on out. Out now. Quickly. Move quicker. Move quicker. YouTubers. YouTubers. Listen to me. Tonight, you got to go to the website, hardcorechristianity.com. Hit the teaching button, and you got to read two articles tonight. Number one, how Satan controls the mind. Number two, Satan's counterattack. You will get hit within 48 hours of this service. You have to be prepared. I'll be back next Friday for another unusual teaching here at the Deliverance Center. Don't forget about the healing room Thursday night, 7 o'clock. Don't forget about the mental illness healing room Thursday night at 7 p.m. right here at the Deliverance Center. See you next time.